Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Another hot, muggy day here in the Midwest. Some thunderstorms came through St. Louis earlier this afternoon, but the skies have cleared over the arch, and we're set for baseball at Bush, where the D-backs will look to even this series against the Cardinals. It's Brandon McCarthy for Arizona and Michael Walker for St. Louis. Good evening from Bush Stadium. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthune, Bob Brentley along the way. This is the D-backs and the Cardinals, the middle game of a three-game set here. And in last night's opener, there's no question. Adam Wainwright was the star, but, Bob, the Cardinal bats were heard from as well. You know, last year they led the world in batting with runners in scoring position, a 330 team average. They're about 100 points below that this year, but their approach has not changed. When they have runners on base, especially with runners in scoring position, they're very aggressive. Matt Adams hit the second pitch out of the ballpark for a two-run homer after Matt Holliday singled to start that inning. Yadier Molina, notorious first pitch swinger. Craig, second pitch on and on. Yeah, first pitch, second pitch, every at bat. They were very, very aggressive. I mentioned it last night. They call it the tsunami. They want to just overwhelm the opposing pitcher once they get runners on base, and it happened all night long. Now, this uh, was Peralta's home run late in the game. Came on the third pitch, but however, it was an 0 2 count. So, bad mistake right there by Bronson Royal. But something to look for in the game tonight. See how aggressive they are with runners in scoring. How did the D backs counter that? Well, you try to mix it up, try to throw some breaking pitches, although they were on those last night as well. Just try to stay out of the middle of the plate, at least pitch to weak contact. All right, something for Brandon McCarthy to think about tonight in this start against the Cardinals. And Michael Walker, their postseason star from last year. The starters look to stay strong. This is a matchup of two guys that have pitched pretty well as of late. Both guys, though, looking for some run support. More on tonight's starters when we come back. on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by CenturyLink, your link to watch next. 
And by Jack in the Box. If the D-backs hit a home run today, score a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with the purchase of a large drink. Shades of Sedona Red here amongst Cardinal Red in downtown St. Louis. Welcome back to Bush Stadium. Steve Berthune, Bob Brenly back with you. Bob, boy, it seems like Brandon McCarthy, over his last five, six starts, if you threw out that fourth inning against the White Sox in Chicago, he would really have some impressive numbers. Well, he's thrown the ball really well to begin with. Uh, luck sometimes has a lot to do with it. That, that outing against the White Sox you were talking about just made a lot of mistakes in the middle of the plate, but his stuff has been very crisp lately. His command, for the most part, has been good. Eight innings last time out against the Nationals. Gave up only two base hits and one run. Did not walk a bat. So it's McCarthy tonight for the Diamondbacks and for the Cardinals, the youngster who was one of their postseason heroes last year. A Waka Waka, it's Michael Waka. Michael Waka, you know, the Diamondbacks have had some good fortune of missing some aces recently, but not so in this Cardinals series. Wainwright last night, Waka following suit here tonight. Seven innings his last time out. Seven hits, two earned runs. He did not Waka Waka batter. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Should be an interesting pitching matchup. Last night we were talking about Adam Wainwright on the mound, but defensively this Star was A.J. Pollock when we come back another look at the well the Jim Edmonds type play that A.J. made here in center field in St. Louis first pitch coming up from Bush Stadium you're watching the Arizona Diamondbacks only here on Fox Sports Arizona back with more after this. Arizona is brought to you in part by Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Choose Chaz. We are now just moments away from first pitch here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Game two of three, the Diamondbacks and the Cardinals. Stephen Bob can accept to have the call. I'm Todd Walsh. We're back here now inside the Arizona Diamondbacks dugout. One last look back to last night. Not a lot to cheer for if you're an Arizona Diamondback fan, but there was one thing. One, although our friends at Fox Sports Live didn't deem it that. How about A.J. Pollock and what he did, making not one but two catches, in a sense, on Yadier Molina in the sixth inning. It was the talk of the clubhouse last night after the Diamondbacks got done digesting what Adam Wainwright had done to them. I didn't see it until I saw the replay. It was pretty awesome, huh? Yeah. <laughs> one of the better catches you've seen. Today. Yeah, it's good. It's very good. Yeah, he, he goes and gets him. That was an amazing catch out there, you know. Um, you know, the wind was blowing out tonight. I thought that might have got out of the park, but, um, you know, he made a great catch, especially to keep his eye on the ball after smashing into the wall and it popping out. That's uh, Two catches. Yeah, exactly. That was, a, that was a good one. I mean, I hit the wall and just kind of 
turned around and um yeah it was like the ball was just floating right there just snatched it out of the air um yeah it was you know it was a cool play and yeah it was a cool play so let's take a couple of looks at it and really this this could fool you if you don't pay careful attention to what happened there he hits the wall the ball pops out as he is falling he's fighting gravity because the ball is going down with him how about that one last look at this thing hits the wall out comes the ball he has the presence of mind and the hand-eye coordination to make the catch and there's the out a standing ovation by the way by the classic cardinal fans here in st louis i talked to kirk gibson earlier today he said it looked like the cardinals were getting ready to call for a review but the video just didn't lie aj pollock made the catch we have filed an official protest with our friends at fox sports live and and the one it was number two last night doesn't make sense we'll take a break here from bush stadium in st louis when we come back we're ready to roll here battle of first baseman in a sense you got paul goldschmidt you know about the power there and we saw what matt adams could do last night in a big way against bronson arroyo got the big home run early in that game a lead the cardinals never looked back on Jackson Cardinals are set for the middle game of this three-game series. Brandon McCarthy walking in from the D-backs bullpen along with Miguel Montero. It's McCarthy and Michael Waka, the starting pitching matchup today. Now, in terms of the umpires, if you were with us last night, you may recall that Brian O'Nora, the crew chief on this particular crew, uh, was out of the game after three innings with an illness. And Casey Wilcox from the D-backs staff tells us that Brian O'Nora is listed as day-to-day. -day. Aren't we all? Well, we hope Brian O'Nora rumored to be back this weekend. Hopefully that'll be the case. Uh, I've seen umpires go down here in St. Louis before, but usually it's in August when it's 100 degrees and the humidity's at 90 percent. But uh, obviously something uh, bothering Brian O'Nora last night. We wish him a speedy recovery. And so your umpires for tonight's ball game will have Doug Eddings as the crew chief, and he will man the plate. We had some thunderstorms roll through here. About 4 o'clock this afternoon, it rained pretty heavily from 3.30 to 4. There are your umpires. Eddings, the crew chief tonight, has the plate. Corey Blazer is at first. Jeff Gosney has been called up to join this crew. He'll take over at second. And Marvin Hudson, who was the man who moved from second base to the plate last night, will be your third base umpire. It's Michael Walker, the 22-year-old right-hander, takes the bound for the Cardinals. We are under clear skies right now. However, it is muggy. It is steamy. It is St. Louis. It's almost summer. And so there's a 
decent chance we might have some thunderstorms about nine o'clock or so local time. So two hours from now, hopefully we should be go to get the, good to go to get this one in. It's a look at our Tire Pro starting lineup for the Diamond Bats. Gerardo Parra once again in right field at the top of the order. Chris Owens playing short, batting second. Paul Goldschmidt, 12 games against the Cardinals. He's put up some big numbers, no surprise. Miguel Montero catching, hitting fourth. Aaron Hill back in the lineup. Good to see Aaron back in there at second base. Martin Prado at third base. Cody Ross in left field. The defensive whiz of the game last night, A.J. Pollock in center. And on the mound for the D-backs, right-hander Brandon McCarthy. Ronald Parra in the leadoff spot. Diamondbacks trying to do a bit better than uh, they did last night. But, boy, they were up against one of the best in baseball. And Adam Wainwright, his first career, one hit shut up. And Arizona Ford starting pitcher tonight is Michael Walker. Last night we saw Wainwright at 6'7". This is another big guy out there. Six foot six. the Cardinals' first round pick just two years ago. In fact, last year, Waka became the first pitcher born in the 1990s to win a World Series game. Ouch. You feeling old? <laughs> oh, man. Never. This kid is special. Not quite on a Wainwright level as of yet, but, boy, he's close. And yeah, we talked about it in the ball game last night. Uh, it just seems like every generation of Cardinals teams, uh, they come up as he greets Dave McKay, his former coach, renewing acquaintances over there. But, yeah, you know, that pass the torch to the next top of the rotation guy. Adam Wainwright certainly is that guy right now, but you know, Michael Walker probably be the next ace of the staff for the St. Louis Cardinals moving forward. He was a uh, key to their postseason on the run to the World Series last year after being called up just about this time last year. Made five postseason starts for St. Louis last October and went four and one with a 2-6-4. ERA not bad for a 22 year old kid with half a big league season under his belt yeah, much like Wainwright he'll throw a couple of different fastballs depending on what the situation calls for his best secondary pitch is a straight change up however he also has a curveball but look for a lot of heaters a lot of change ups Ronald Parra starts us off first pitch swing and right to Matt Adams one pitch one out for Walker that was hit on a rope but Adams is a big guy hard to miss didn't have to move right in his tracks. Boy, nice uh, approach that time by Gerardo Parra. Got something he was looking for. Put a good swing on it. Hit the daylights out of it. But one pitch, one out. A page out of your Cardinals playbook. Here's Chris Owings, the shortstop. 285, two home runs for CEO. Owings a pair of three hit games in the series at Chase Field against the Dodgers. And looking to translate that success from his home field out on the road, something he's had trouble with this year. Molina hangs on. First strikeout for Waka. Two down. So far, all fastballs from Waka sitting in the low to mid 90s. Mostly four seamers so far, just straight as an arrow, trying to hit the strike zone, get his legs underneath him out there. Paul Goldschmidt, his double last night, the only hit allowed by Adam Wainwright. Goldie's slow going for him lately with the exception of that career day against the Dodgers on Saturday. Paul over his last 10 games hitting about 210. And he's behind here a ball and two strikes. Ooh, that's going to be a strike. It's going to be a tough night for the hitters. That one down there at the bottom of the knees maybe a little bit below the bottom of the knees. Oh yeah. Doug Eddings the crew chief for tonight behind the plate. Goldie laces that to right, but right at Craig. So two hard hit balls in the inning by the D-backs, but right to Cardinal defenders. And it's a nine pitch inning for Michael Walker. Brandon McCarthy set to take the mound here in St. Louis.
They're on a roll as of late, scoring either four or five runs a game, it seems. And they're on the verge of a very unusual baseball oddity here. Trying to make it one more, and Matt Carpenter will lead it off for the Cardinals against Brandon McCarthy. Let's take a look at our Tire Pro starting lineup for St. Louis. Matt Carpenter once again at the top of the order, playing third base. Colton Wong at second. Matt Holliday out in left field. Big, big city Matt Adams went way back to center field last night. Yadier Molina, two for four, and... Had an extra base hit stolen away by A.J. Pollock out there at the fence. Alan Craig in right field. Peter Borges, Phoenix native, in the lineup today in center field. Daniel Descalso at shortstop tonight. And right-hander Michael Waka on the mound. Brandon McCarthy making his 10th start. And Matt Carpenter is set to go. Strike one. Carpenter 264 batting average that's down more than 50 points from last year when he was an all-star and led the league in hits. He was one for four with a double in last night's series opener. He's hit safely in four or five. Little nubber back to the mound. Brandon has it. One up one down for McCarthy. Your Arizona Ford starting pitcher is Brandon McCarthy. He was outstanding his last time out. Eight innings of two-hit ball against the Nationals. That was last Wednesday at Chase Field, so he's working on a full week's rest. And we mentioned the one bad inning against the White Sox to start before that, but you go back even a little further, his start against the Padres, seven innings of three-hit shutout baseball. So he's been on quite a roll lately, with the exception of that one inning in Chicago. Second baseman Colton Wong. Another strike one from McCarthy. A ball and a strike to Colton Wong, 256 on the year. One for four with a double in last night's ball game. He scored a run. One and two. It's probably an appropriately uh, lettered shirt. So if he stands up, everyone just goes, sit down, you clown. <laughs> Watching a ball game here. If he turns around, he's got a big red rubber nose on. Wow, that looks like a divot I took on a golf course one time. <laughs> Just need to replace both sides of his head. <laughs> One and two. Well, Brandon McCarthy in each of his last three starts, outstanding the first time through the order. Last time out against the Nationals, perfect with two strikeouts. In Chicago, first three innings, perfect with four strikeouts. Against San Diego, scoreless through three, three strikeouts. In fact, the only batter with a hit against McCarthy the first time through the order in his last three starts is Padres pitcher Ian Kennedy. How about that? So we'll see if Brandon can get a roll going here tonight. 2-2. Two -two. Long is making him work. Yeah, not unusual to see some grinding at bats from these Cardinals with nobody on base trying to find a way to get on base. But once they get runners on, as we mentioned in the open, they are very aggressive. This is upstairs and it's full three balls and two strikes. Good at bat here by the 23 year old. Got him. First strikeout for Brandon. Two outs. Yeah, nice movement on that fastball away from Wong. Just enough tailing action. He swings underneath it out off the end of the bat. Second out here in the bottom of the first. Now the big boys start getting up there. And uh, here's one of the big ones, Matt Holliday. 6'4", 250. They got some beef in this lineup. 272 and two homers.
And as Bob mentioned, the man they call Big City is on deck. Matt Adams, a homer last night. That's quickly become one of my favorite nicknames. It's a great one. Big City on a hop to Owings at short. Three up, three down for McCarthy just underway at Bush Stadium. Backs and a welcome side. He'll hit second in this inning. And let's take a look now at our Lowe's never stop improving player of the game. It is Aaron Hill. He's hit in four straight games, seven hits in his last four starts. Yeah, you just hope there's no residual effect from that shoulder injury. Aaron said he was ready to play a couple of days ago, but just to be on the safe side, Kirk Gibson kept him on the bench for an extra day. Cliff Pennington filling in at second base. Miguel Montero leads off the second against Michael Walker. Miggy 272. He's homered five times. Waco 1 2 3 first with one strikeout. Montero's ahead 2 0. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Miggy taking all the way, looks at a strike. Now, I always like to gauge your food favorite at all the ballparks because you always know a guy and you have a, a favorite stand or a favorite pizza place, a favorite burger joint. What is it in St. Louis? Well, here at the ballpark, it's just too easy. As you well know, we go out the back door of the press box, and we're out there on the concourse, and you can get whatever you want. But they've got pretty good za here at the ballpark. Oh, yeah. St. Louis pizza. Who knew? Well, I can't find any good pizza anywhere else in St. Louis, but the stuff here at the ballpark is not bad. Mm. Three and two to Miggy. Lead off walk. And, of course, if you're in St. Louis, you got to order up some toasted ravioli. That's a very much a St. Louis regional dish. Here is Aaron Hill. His first action since last Friday against the Dodgers. That sore shoulder after some diving stops in the game against the Nationals a week ago has kept him out. But back in there tonight at 269 and four home runs. First pitch swing, and this has a chance to end up in the glove of Alan Prince. Looked a little more like a line drive off the bat there. There was a big gap out there in right center, but got under it just a little bit too much. Fluttered out there into the glove of Alan Craig. Up into that humidity. <laughs> Martin Prado. That's one of those things. I always thought that the more humid it was, 
that the ball didn't carry as well. Hmm. But uh, the thick air. Sterling Professor Robert Kramer wrote a book called The uh, Physics of Baseball. And in that book, he talked about the effect that humidity has on the baseball and how far it carries. And actually, the, the water in the air allows the ball to stay aloft a lot longer. They did lots of studies and lots of research. And there's numbers in there if you'd like to read it. But uh, technically, the ball does carry better the more humid it is. Certainly didn't feel like it when I played. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Brenly. Uh, don't mention it. That's and a good book. I mean, it, you know, if you like baseball and you like, uh, you know, they talk about corked bats. They talk about scuffed baseballs. and Those you know, things are illegal. Well, I know. But, uh, you know. They... There goes Miggy. Molina throws from his knees, oh, and Montero that. has a stolen base. That's not going to sit well with number four behind the plate when the catcher steals on him. It'll go down as a stolen base on Yachty or Molina, but uh, we all know that anytime Miggy steals a base, it's on the pitcher. That time he got about a three-step running lead before Waka even made a move to home plate. Boy, it looked like Miggy's leg came up. He might have been out out there at second base. And there is a stall in place, and in fact, Mike Matheny will walk out and have a discussion. Jeff Gosney is the umpire who is replacing Brian O'Nora on this crew. And this is his call. I don't think there's any question. Miggy beat the throw, but the question was when that front leg popped up in the air, was the tag on him at that time? They're going to take a look. So poor Gosney gets a phone call. Hey, you got to get to St. Louis and umpire this game. And now second inning, they're already reviewing one of his plays. Yeah, watch that lead leg up in the air as the tag was applied to the shoulder. Huh? I don't know. We have to take a close look at this one. And again, you have to find an angle that provides clear and convincing evidence that Montero was out. And that's what they'll try and do right now in New York as the Cardinals challenge the call. Yadier Molina all smiles back there. Maybe he'll be off the hook. Well, right now, Miguel Montero sitting on his third stolen base of his career. If it's uh, overruled on the challenge here, it would be his fifth caught stealing. So Mike Matheny choosing to burn his challenge with one out in the second inning. Boy, that's very, very close. He's out. <laughs> it's not that close. He must feel pretty confident about his chance to get the call overturned. Two umpires involved. The umpire who made the call talks to the press box. The crew chief talks to New York, the command center, where they're looking at the replay right now, and they've made a decision. The call is overturned. Miggy is out. Another win for the expanded review system, helped put in place by Tony LaRussa. And so far, it's remarkable how well this has worked. It really has. And, uh, you know, people were concerned that the delay in the game it would lead to even longer ball games. But I think, if anything, it's shortened up the time of game. You don't have one manager coming out to argue and then the other manager arguing because that manager was arguing. And this delay after delay after delay, you run in, you talk to Bam back in New York, they get a real good look at it, and we move along. Baseball advanced media. Two and two now on Prado. Now, just baseball, not advanced media, but just baseball alone. Miguel Montero, I, he's got to get his foot on the base. He was, he would have been safe if he had that front leg down and hit the front corner of the base and allow that to stop your momentum. But he hit the ground, the front leg came up in the air, and that's when the tag was applied, and consequently, he's out. Yeah, if he leaves that left foot down and catches the front part of the base, he would have been safe. Yeah, the lead foot is up in the air. 2-2. Two -two. Prado dunks that one into right for a base hit. And now how big was Mike Matheny's challenge? He has challenged to umpire's call six times this season. That was his third successful challenge, so he's working at a 50% rate. But Same. that took a big base runner away. Probably though. saved a run right yeah. there. With two outs in the inning, Miguel Montero, uh, had he been safe at second, would have been running on contact and... Even with uh, Miggy's speed, might have been able to score on that line drive to right. Cody Ross. Right to the governor. Just underneath the radio booth to our right here. Craig Schulte and Tom Candy on it. 
Cody 195 at a home run. By the way, it's only May 21st, and there have already been 151 umpire calls overturned on managers' challenges. 151 calls here. We're about, what, six, seven weeks in. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. In fact, 47% of the umpire's calls challenged by the managers have been overturned. Little pop up to short right center. Colton Wong calling everyone off. He's under it. He's got it. And they strand the Prado single. No score in St. Louis. Thirty-first, as we support the D-backs and take on the Cincinnati Reds. First twenty thousand fans get this Mark Trumbo T-shirt, courtesy of Fry's Food Stores. For tickets, visit dbacks.com/tickets today. I believe Mark designed this one. This is his. Uh, this is part of the competition. Mark designed that. The other two were Martin Prado and Cody Ross. So you'll get your Mark Trumbo. Personally designed t-shirt if you come out and join us at Chase Field May 31st to see the Reds Matt Adams A two-run homer in the first last night off Bronson Arroyo He's hit in four straight Looks at a strike going to one, you know, not quite as an exaggerated shift as you might expect against Matt Adams Partially because he's got nine infield hits this year Taking those pitches away and hitting them to left field. So with that in mind, Martin Prado, well, he's now moved over almost to the straight up shortstop position. But when the at bat started, he was playing in the hole between third and short. And you can see Chris Owings is on the shortstop side of second base. It used to be earlier in this year a drastic shift on Matt Adams, but teams have lessened it somewhat because he has shown that willingness to slap the ball the other way and that that's fine his batting average is up but his slugging is down so in a sense even if he gets a little slap single to left the shift is working right i think so yeah i yeah. mean uh, it's like when you bring a left-handed specialist in out of the bullpen to face a tough left-handed hitter if you give up a single well you know you've kind of accomplished your goal you want to keep that guy in the ballpark and for matt adams that's definitely what you want him to do think about hitting the ball the opposite field you won't find a hotter hitter right now anywhere than the Cardinals Yadier Molina. A little trash talking about the stolen base controversy <laughs> from the top half of the second inning. Molina comes into tonight with an eight game hitting streak. Six of those are two hit games including last night's series opener. And he's up to 331 on the year. The 
McCarthy jumps ahead 0 and 2. Bob, what is it that you think has made Yadier Molina from a defense first guy, which he was the first five, six years, to one of the better offensive catchers in baseball? What's, what's changed? Well, part of it was he got tired of hitting in the eighth spot in the lineup. You know, he wanted to be up in a more productive spot and gradually worked his way up the lineup. And I think he just experience. you know. He, he recognizes what pitchers are trying to do to him, and from all those years sitting behind the plate and calling a game for his pitchers, he's got a real good idea of, what a guy is likely to do with the next pitch and the pitch after that, and he's prepared for it. His batting average has been over 300 each of the last three years. And he's just gone up again. Rolls a little infield single in the center for a one-out hit. First base runner for the Cardinals. That's a good example right there in a two-strike count. He just gets the bat on the ball. Very abbreviated, quick, short swing. Just make contact. Drives it right back up the middle of the field. And now a nine-game hitting streak for the Cardinals catcher. One out, Molina at first. It's Alan Craig. And Alan Craig is a guy who's hit over 300 each of the last three years, but right now he's at 220. Now the question is, does Molina try and steal on Miggy? <laughs> You know what they say about payback? She, oh, yeah. She's not very nice. Alan Craig, the only Cardinal position player who did not get a hit last night. He was 0 for 4. Base hit. Couple of little infield singles have put two on with one out for the Cardinals. Let's take a look at our Valley Honda keys to the game. You mentioned earlier the Cardinals have scored four or five runs in seven straight games, so keep them under four. And for Brandon McCarthy, he wants to stay under 10. He surrendered nine home runs up to this point. He wanted to stay out of double digits if possible. Peter Borges. From Notre Dame Prep in Scottsdale. We're just hitting only 230 his first season in St. Louis. He really struggled to begin the year. But he has looked like a much different guy lately. Last 12 games, he's hitting over 340. He was benched for a while. In the air to center, room for Pollock. Two down. Brings up Daniel Descalso, the shortstop. Now, this is a guy, a career 240 hitter, but he's at a buck 71 this year. Johnny Peralta, two big hits last night, including a home run is one for 21 career against Brandon McCarthy. So despite the hits last night, Peralta sits and we get a look at Descalso. The computer got Johnny Peralta. Happens every time yeah. these days. <laughs> Strike one. I mean, obviously every manager and coaching staff has access to every number you can possibly imagine, but obviously one of the first things you look at is past history between a pitcher and a hitter and I guarantee you when Mike Matheny saw that and Daniel Descalso saw that, he was ready to play today. AJ. He's had a busy series out there so far. McCarthy strands two. We are scoreless through two. Century Lake, your link to what's next. Sure enough, it's AJ Pollock will lead off the third.
is finally here. It's happening all around us, so go grab a Pepsi and some friends and get out to a D-backs game and live it. It's time to live for now, fans. Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Arizona Diamondbacks. We back the D-backs. Some Sedona Red mixed in there. Michael Walker opens up the third against A.J. Pollock. Pollock, McCarthy, Parra, 8-9-1 and one for the Diamondbacks. AJ last night 0 for 3, couple of strikeouts. He's at 308. AJ Pollock last dozen games, hitting almost 420. The extra base hits have been coming in bunches. Into those red seats and red shirts. Genius. <laughs> the little things. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Yeah, you just don't know if people are here or not. Seats are red. The fans almost all wear Cardinal red here at Bush Stadium. Even the empty seats are polite. <laughs> That's out of play. Yeah, Todd mentioned it uh, in the pregame show. Uh, it was a really nice gesture by the Cardinal fans last night after A.J. made that tremendous catch on that Yadier Molina drive. Uh, I think a lot of people didn't realize that he dropped the ball and caught it a second time. And when they showed it on the big board here at the ballpark, uh, yeah, quite a round of applause. It was a nice moment. Got a couple of good looks at it. This was A.J. Pollock last night. It's going right into the Jim Edmonds sign, which was apropos, I thought. <laughs> I'm just amazed at that downward swipe right there. He was able to keep the ball in his glove and not just bounce it off that warning track. Strikes out on the 3 2 pitch. Second strikeout for Walker. Diamondbacks faced Walker here at Bush Stadium on June 4th last year. It was just his second ever big league start. He had thrown seven innings of two hit ball in his debut as McCarthy takes a strike. But the Diamondbacks came in here and well, they knocked Walker around pretty good in his second major league start. Six runs, ten hits. He lasted less than five innings. Easy play for Walker. Two up, two down. And that is still the worst start of Walker's young career. And this was well almost a year ago. Ten hits and four and two thirds. And his first ground ball out right there, first time through the order. Gerardo Parra swung at the first pitch of the ball game and hit a rocket down the first baseline, but it was right at Matt Adams for the easy outs. Diamondbacks barreled up two in that first against Walker. Goldie lined out hard to right. Strike one. Well, it's kind of tough to say that uh, Michael Walker came out of nowhere, but it seemed like for a long time uh, when you talk Cardinal pitching prospects, Shelby Miller was the name that everybody talked about. And certainly Shelby Miller is going to be a real good pitcher, too, off to a great start this year. But uh, Michael Walker was kind of under the radar, if you can say that about a first round pick. But has quickly taken his place uh, at the top of this Cardinals rotation. Drafted in the first round less than two years ago. He was fast tracked to the big leagues. And he gets Para. Three strikeouts for Waka, no score in St. Louis.
you go hard, you can't really assume that you're not going to get it. But um, I think if it's the right situation, um, you know, I think you're, you're more stealing on the pitcher. So because uh, you're not really going to steal off of, of Molina. And there you have it. That's our Geico quote of the game. A.J. Pollock, the man of the hour, talking about trying to steal bases on Yadier Molina here of the St. Louis Cardinals. Stephen Bob, I don't know about you guys, but the more I talk to A.J. Pollock, the more impressed I get. Here's a guy that's just uh, come into his own. Great understanding of the game. Great feel for the game. I just seem to remember when he was getting that shot a year ago in the wake of the injury to Adam Eaton, but look where he is now. Yeah, I agree, Todd. The Diamondbacks saw... A really nice skill set as Waka leads off the Cardinal third with a strike. And, and the offensive potential bomb clearly was there because it was a hard decision. All right, we've got to pick a center fielder here. And Kevin Towers had said it's not like they disliked Adam Eaton. They just really liked AJ. And we've seen the defense. He's a terrific base runner. And this year we're seeing the power potential in that bat. And I think as he continues to get more and more comfortable and quickly decipher what opposing pitchers are trying to do against him and make adjustments from game to game, sometimes at bat to at bat, I, I think the offensive numbers are just going to keep getting better. Well, he has said that he's tried a specific approach this year, something new, a little more aggressive up there, taking some harder swings. And yes, that will mean an increase in the strikeout rate, but with that has come real offensive dividends. How hard an adjustment is that if you're going to start? All right, let's get up there and see what the what the big dog eat a little bit here. <laughs> well, you know, and it, it wasn't just a, a light bulb went on and all of a sudden he decided he was going to start swinging a little harder, generate a little more power. As that one's grounded to CO at shortstop, should be an easy play. I mean, I'm sure it, it evolved. You know, some work in the cage last year, some more work in the cage this year, looking at video and determining that uh, you know he could be a little more aggressive he didn't have to be a slap hitter and just punch the ball around he could occasionally get the count in his favor and look for a pitch to drive yeah and the first two weeks of the season he was hitting under 200 but one of his assets has been his stubbornness when he went with this different approach at the plate and he looked lost up there the first couple of weeks sometimes a lot of strikeouts but he he said no I, I'm, this is going to work I'm going to get there and he kind of rode it out. And boy, since then, since that first two week period when he was uh, last under 200 for the year, he's hit about 370 and slugged 700. So the power has really shown up. I mean, that's a take those numbers and that offensive improvement and then throw in the defense and the base running, and you've really got something now. One and one to Matt Carpenter. So once again, Brandon McCarthy now for the fourth consecutive start has held the opposition scoreless the first time through the order. Well, a big key to beating this Cardinals team is keeping this guy off base. Matt Carpenter was the motor of this Cardinals team last year in that leadoff spot in their 93 wins. He scored 99 runs. In their 64 losses, he only scored 27. He led the majors in runs scored last year. And by a lot. It wasn't close. Two balls and two strikes. Misses there. It's full, apparently. Three and two. Sun setting in St. Louis. Must be some glare getting in Doug Edding's eyes back there behind a the plate. That was a good pitch. <laughs> Couldn't help yourself. Couldn't help it. Here comes A.J. Can't handle that one. Carpenter's got a single. Just kind of died on him out there in shallow center. Yeah, he elevates that one just below belt level out over the plate. Carpenter with a sinking line drive to center. A.J. realized he wasn't going to be able to get there in time, so just made sure to block that ball, keep it in front, hold Carpenter to a single. If that ball gets behind him. It's oh. a disaster. Right? Off to the races, yeah. I mean, the corner outfielders have to run a mile to get to that ball in center field. 
They probably have a better chance AJ just turning around and chasing it, but fortunately that didn't happen. All one to Colton Wong who struck out his first time. It's an interesting model that the Cardinals use here, Bob, because you've got a guy in Carpenter. Not only is he your third baseman, doesn't profile over there in terms of the traditional numbers, the home runs, the RBIs. He's a great hitter, but he's not going to hit for power. And he's also the leadoff guy, and he doesn't have a whole lot of speed. And they have speedy guys like Wong and Borges lower down. But uh, Carpenter's the guy who leads it off. And, you know, with Johnny Peralta at shortstop this year, he will make up the power numbers that you lose playing Carpenter at third base. We've talked about this in the past, like the Cubs, when they had Sandberg at second and Grace at first. Mark Grace didn't hit a lot of home runs. He hit a bazillion doubles, but he wasn't a big-time home run hitter. But Ryan Sandberg more than made up for that. And Carpenter is walking more this year and as the Cardinal leadoff man. He's still getting on base at close to the same rate he was last year, even though he's hitting 50 points below what he was hitting last year in terms of batting average. Two balls and a strike. Three and one. Now these are not your uh, grandfather's Cardinals or the Whitey Herzog uh, Cardinals that used to get a guy on base steal second steal third put down a squeeze bunt do it again the next inning just slap the ball around the ballpark steal bases like crazy. Now, those days are long gone. Goldie. He turns that play as well as anyone and then look at the backhanded stop on the other end Paul Goldschmidt showing off that gold glove at first makes two terrific plays and the Diamondbacks turn two and end the third the Goldie glove at first we're scoreless through three. The realtor. Well, Bob, we've seen Paul Goldschmidt turn that 363 or 361 so many times he just makes it look easy. He really does. And on this particular play, he got his body into a position so as soon as he caught the ground ball, watch the right foot. That little jab step forward allows him to do that reverse pivot. Make that good strong throw on to Chris Owings and gives him plenty of time to get back to the bag to cover. How hard a play is that for a first oh, baseman? It's incredibly difficult. Uh, you know, it, it's a little bit easier because of the way Paul fielded that one off to his left side and turned his back to his target initially. When you have to turn to your right, it's tough to get much on the throw. But uh, as I said, he got his body in the perfect position that time. He made it look easy, but it sure isn't an easy play. He is a real athlete down there. Great quickness. Two balls, no strikes to Chris Owings, who leads off the fourth against Walker. Owings, Goldschmidt, Montero, two, three, and four.
Chris struck out his first time. This is in the right, right to Craig. Well, we've had some fun this year comparing Paul Goldschmidt at this stage of his career with some other guys who have gone on to have stellar careers, and Matt Holliday certainly has had a stellar career. And Paul Goldschmidt is right there through their first 400 career games. Goldie's 400th was last night. It's remarkable how similar some of those numbers are mm -hmm. and very much same styles Two big tall big strong right hand hitters. That Goldie a far superior defender at first base and Matt Holliday is in left field but offensively they uh, like mirror images. Two and over to Goldie. Three balls and no strikes. Walker being careful here. Will be lined out to right his first time up, hit the ball well, and he's got a four pitch walk. Second walk issued by Michael Walker. That had pitch around written all over it. Now you rarely see that uh, this early in the ball game. But, uh, gonna mess with them. I don't think there's any question when you look up and down this Diamondbacks lineup and they go over every hitter in their advance meeting the one guy that you do not want to let beat you is Paul Goldschmidt. So even with nobody on base they don't want to give him anything to hit. Miguel Montero walked his first time. Well, Walker's had to be very conservative here in terms of who he's going to pitch to and who he won't because the Cardinals have had real trouble scoring runs this year. And he's pitched to a 2 a 2 ERA and only has three victories. This is in the air to left. It's easy play for Holiday. Well, Walker won't get any sympathy from Jeff Samarja who stood to get a win today. Cubs had a 2 nothing lead in the ninth. Yankees came back and tied it up. Can Spitz you win look again? Can you win the Cy Young without winning a game? <laughs> if your ERA is 1.46 or whatever it is, I don't know, boy. I, I can't imagine anybody who's pitched better than Jeff Samarja and is yet to win a game. Aaron Hill, well, Walker. In fact, both Walker and Brandon McCarthy are in the bottom 10 in the National League in terms of run support. And Waka only three wins all year, despite the fact he has not given up more than three runs in any start this season. So he's held the opposition to three runs or fewer every time. And he's only won three games. There's a strike, one and one. That tells you how the Cardinals offense has been going. the right field line and drifting into the seats on a play of all in two strikes. Aaron Hill last 20 games batting over 340 with 15 RBIs. So his bat is certainly a welcome sight to the lineup after missing a few games of that sore shoulder. Waka about to throw his 50th pitch. Soft fly in the right field. Craig calls off Borges. And that's the inning. No score, Bush.
Memorial Day. With us at Chase Field, Monday, May 26th. That's the D-backs and the Padres. And you can join the Diamondbacks in paying tribute to our veterans. It's Military Appreciation Day. The first 15,000 fans age 21 or older get this D-backs camo jersey courtesy of Budweiser. Just visit dbacks.com slash tickets and join us at Chase Field, Monday, May 26th. Brandon McCarthy, the bottom of the third for St. Louis, ended with that Paul Goldschmidt, Chris Owings, 3-6-3 double play. And remarkably, that was just the second double play ball Brandon McCarthy has induced all season. Wow, that is surprising. He starts out ahead of Matt Holiday, 0-1. He's had a fair amount of traffic on the bases from time to time. But I think that's partly due because Brandon's strikeouts are up this year. He's got a little more zip on those fastballs. He's recently remade himself into a ground ball pitcher. He was a fly ball pitcher when he was with the White Sox and with the Rangers. There's a little ground ball chopped foul near third. And Brandon with that extra zip. The result of a very strength-oriented offseason program, trying to avoid the shoulder trouble, which crops up right at this point in the season every year. And I'm trying to curb that off with a grueling offseason program, and it's uh, made him a little sturdier out there, certainly stronger. He has averaged 94 miles an hour with that two-seam sinker and 92 with the cutter this year. And those velocities are up from 91 and 90 last season. This is what he's done tonight. He can get it up as high as 94 now. That's a new territory for him. Yeah, when you get a little more velocity, you can pitch more to non-contact. You can mm -hmm. throw that high fastball and get guys to swing and miss, whereas last year, I think he felt he had to throw that sinker down, look for the ground balls. Oh, a little cross up there with nobody on base. Watch Miguel Montero's reaction. He's sliding out to his right, and the ball comes right back over the plate. That might have been a strike. Well, he saved Doug Edding's life back there. How do you cross a guy up with nobody on base? Oh. 93 miles an hour on the pitch. No elbow guard for Matt Holiday. That sounded like it hit bone. Up and in, just continue to tail in there. Got him right on the elbow. It is very humid here. It is uh, almost soupy now. It's St. Louis almost in summertime. It certainly feels like July or August here. And might be a grip problem for Brandon. What he needs is some pine tar on his neck. There you go. I'll take care of that. And that's a good example of why hitters say, you know, they don't really care if a pitcher is out there using pine tar. They'd rather have the guy be able to control the baseball and not get hit in the head or the arm in this case. Ooh. Right on the forearm. Luckily, it missed the elbow. And Holiday is aboard. A hit batter leads off the Cardinal fourth. Here's Matt Adams. Strike one. Adams a strikeout victim his first time. And McCarthy as a Royal learned last night has to be careful here. Adams is hitting over 350 against right hand pitching this season including all three of his home runs. In the right, in front of Hara. First two have reach for the Cardinals in the fourth. Well, normally you'd say that's a good pitch. It was down, but Big City likes that ball down. Knee level or below, he can go down and get him. Man, that pitch is about ankle high over the middle of the plate, and he hit a bullet out there to right field. The pride of Slippery Rocks baseball program. Two on, nobody out, and here is the red-hot Yadier Molina. Holiday on second, Adams on first. And it's Molina who's single in the second, extended his hit streak to nine games. 
Watch that first pitch. He will swing at the first pitch about 40% of the time, well above league average. Even more so, as Bob pointed out, with runners in scoring position or runners on base. If you're the catcher, you think he's swinging here, right? Absolutely. If he's standing at the plate with a runner at second base, he's swinging. <laughs> Trying to ambush that first fastball from Brandon McCarthy. And this is what we talked about. How you combat that is throw a fastball somewhere he can't get a good swing on it. That one up and in, jammed him on the hands, just fouled it away. Oh and two. And if he follows his history now he will almost exclusively try to hit the ball to right field once he gets to a two strike count unless a pitcher makes a horrible mistake where he can pull the ball he's going to try to hit it up the middle or the right field. So how do you counter that. Well once again inside always works hard in. See where Montero sets up. They go down and away. He rolls it to third. Prano makes a nice play. And they turn nice. two. Brandon McCarthy had only one double play ball all year behind him going into the ball game. And he's got two in four innings so far tonight. That'll work as well. Get him to roll over on a breaking ball. Martin Prado throwing on the move to Aaron Hill with Molina running. They had plenty of time to complete that double play. And how about Aaron Hill? Planting that foot at second base, and he's got big city bearing down on him. <laughs> that is not a comfortable feeling when 6'3, 260 is coming at you. You can feel the earth rumbling. <laughs> you feel him before you see him. Had a chance to get out of this meth and mess and strand Holiday at third. It's Alan Craig who singled his first time. Strike one. This is not a good feeling if you're Aaron Hill. He hung in there, boy. Yeah, fortunately, he had just enough time to make that relay throw and jump up in the air. Jumped clear over the big city. <laughs> I think you like that big city. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's a good one. Well, when you played college ball at Slippery Rock and you're from Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania, and suddenly you're in St. Louis, one of the baseball and capitals of America, you are in the big city. Yeah. And being 260 doesn't hurt either. A ball and a strike to Alan Craig. Two and one. Craig is the key run producing bat in this St. Louis lineup. Has been the last two years, but uh, he has gone this month from RBI machine to strikeout machine. He struck out twice last night. Base hit RBI. one nothing Cardinals. Some guys just have a knack. And he's one of those guys. That breaking ball that just didn't get down there low enough. Hard top spin grounder through the left side of the infield. So the Cardinals continue a trend that they established last night. All five of their runs in the ball game last night were scored with two outs in the inning. One nothing, two outs. Peter Borges, ball one. Matter of fact, seven of their ten hits in the game last night came with two outs in an inning. Borges in St. Louis after his trade from Anaheim last November. That was the deal that sent third baseman and postseason hero David Freeze to the Angels. There's a strike. Borges brought in here to be their everyday guy in center field, but the bat was slow to come around. It's been much better as of late. And Borges had some injury issues in the early part of his career. A couple of hamstring pulls, broke his right wrist. There's a guy that's listed at six foot 185 in the media guy, but he's got some pop in that bat. Craig running on the pitch. It's foul back one and two. He played on those same Notre Dame prep teams with my son Michael and a lot of the 
traveling summer teams with Ike Davis and Nick Evans, some of the other guys that mm -hmm. uh, names that you've heard around baseball. And Peter Borges was always the leadoff hitter, the center fielder, and uh, it was very apparent early on he was going to be a high draft pick and make it to the major leagues rather quickly. Drafted by the Angels in the 10th round at 05. A ball and two strikes. Off the glove of Miggy into the backstop. So Craig, who was off with the last pitch, he'll get second base after all. We saw a cross up with nobody on at second base and now a fastball that he just throws it right by Miguel Montero. He's clearly expecting a different pitch there. And now Craig, who drove in the game's first run, is in scoring position with two outs. Two and two. It's full. Two out walk. Here comes Mike Harkey. First base on balls issued by Brandon. Now they'll try and sort out what's going on with all these cross ups. 22 pitches in this inning. And still some work to do with Del Scasso up. McCarthy started off the inning by hitting Matt Holiday in the forearm. A single by Adams. Molina hit into a double play, which sent Holiday to third. Craig and RBI single made it one nothing. Two out walk to Borges. Two on, two outs for Del Scalso. Just his seventh start all year. He's had only nine at bats this month coming into the ball game. Scalso follows that, fouls that out of here, and it's 0-1. He's been a part of things in St. Louis, going back to that 2011 World Series team. And he's played between 120, 150 games each of the last three seasons. Usually starts somewhere between 70 and 90 games, but strictly a reserve this year. A guy who will be coming off the bench can play all three infield spots. Descalso kind of filling the role that Skip Schumacher used to have with the Cardinals. I remember some games Tony La Russa would start Schumacher at second base in the fifth inning. He'd end up in center field as part of a double switch. <laughs> Move to right field later in the game. End up back at second base to finish the game. Descalso, a guy that can play actually all four infield positions. He's played five games at first base and could probably do a serviceable job on the corner outfield spots. McCarthy looking for one more strike to strand two and get out of this inning with only the one run. And there it is. Called strike three. Third strikeout for Brandon. He strands two, but the Cardinals take a one nothing lead. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Martin Prado leads it off for the D-backs in the fifth. 333 over his last 10 games. He'll start us off.
for this one, FoxSportsArizona.com. You can read about A.J. Pollock's emergence. Jack Gruder has a story on there. You get some Diamondbacks post-game interviews with the video portion of the website. And Randy Hill examines what will the Suns do? They pick 14th, 18th, and 27th. FoxSportsArizona.com. Michael Waka with a 1-0 lead, 50 pitches through four. Prado, Ross, Pollock, 6, 7, and 8 in the Arizona fifth. Martin singled his first time up. The blurred vision suffered over the weekend, chalked up to an allergy in the left eye. And he says with the medicine, the blurriness goes away. The big concern was for Martin, it was only the one eye. That was a little unusual, but the doctors told him everything is fine. But up there, still looking for his first home run. In fact, only nine extra base hits all year for Martin. That line drive stroke that we saw throughout the second half of last year has yet to show up. And you remember how good he was in August. National League Player of the Month, 374. Had 30 RBIs in 26 games that month. And he was as tough and out as there was in the big leagues. Still trying to get it going here in 2014. 251 coming into the ball game. And he's one for one so far. Three balls and two strikes. Ooh. Right in the glove. And thank goodness. Prado barreled that one up right back to the box. And Walker glove up almost in self-defense, and it went right to it. He may have suffered a bruised hand because uh, obviously you don't have time to square that ball up in the pocket of the mitt. You just throw the leather up in self-protection, and that ball caught him. A bullet. Oh, he got it in the pocket, too. Really fortunate. Yeah. That thing was headed right for his right shoulder, which could probably be the worst news the Cardinals could have gotten. But Walker, with those quick reactions, able to get that glove up there in self-defense and make the catch. Well, hey, Jay and Dan, A.J. Pollock's play last night might not have been the one. That one could be the one. Cody Ross. I mean, it's remarkable that Waka can, he's got about 30 seconds or so to compose himself and get right back on the rubber and do it again. Scary stuff. Cody popped up his first time 0 for 1. Michael Walker, 22 years old, turns 23 July 1st. And Bob mentioned earlier how he was kind of fast-tracked to the big leagues, drafted out of Texas A&M less than two years ago. And he finished that same year he was drafted by going through the Cardinal system. He pitched in rookie ball, high A ball, even got to double A Springfield in the Texas League that first year. Come on back, Cody. It's full three and two, says Doug Ennings. Looks like it may have just nipped that outside corner. Cody obviously looking something middle of the plate in there and a 3-1 count, something he could drive. And when you're looking for something from the middle of the plate in, a pitch on the outside corner looks like it's a mile away because yeah. you're anticipating that ball coming inside. Walker can bring the heat at 95. He's got a four-seam fastball that is averaging 94 this year. There's the cutter, but as Bob mentioned, the pitch to watch out for is that changeup. He'll throw it about 20% of the time. This is upstairs that time, and now Cody can take his base. That's three walka walkas. Ooh, I like it. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. That's hard not to say that. It is. You know, 
between Waka Waka and Big City. Could be a long ball game. <laughs> but yeah, he got drafted less than two years ago. He finishes up that season. He starts it at Texas A&M. Finishes going through three levels of the Cardinals minor league system. And then last year, Triple A right out of the gate, 15 starts, and then bang, he's in the big leagues. And later, the World Series. <laughs> Some noise over the PA system just as Waka was about ready to make his delivery. AJ jumped out of the batter's box. Doug Eddings jumped out from behind Yadier Molina. I think it scared everybody. Is Rob here tonight? <laughs> Get center field. Borges can go get him, but not that time. And Cody heads for third. AJ found that little no man's land spot in right center. And that is the Diamondbacks first base runner to reach third in this series. Yeah, a little bit of a jam shot which turned out to be a good thing had that ball carried out there much for further. Uh, Borges may have had a chance to run underneath and make the catch but just got out there and died on the grass in right center putting D backs on the corners. Now with a pitcher up, what do you? How do you play this? Uh, I always like the uh, the safety squeeze in this situation. You know, you're, the idea is you're trying to bunt AJ Pollock up to second base. If it's a perfect bunt and Cody Ross thinks he can come down that line and score, then uh, go for it. McCarthy squares and gets a nice one down underhand scoop, and there's nowhere for Cody to go. Molina has the plate block and he's out at home. Didn't quite get it far enough away from the plate. You had the bat in there as well. Boy, that, that's just a tremendously athletic play by Michael Walker. That looked like a good bunt. I can't blame Cody Ross for trying to score on that. It looked like he should be able to get down that line and get on the dish. But look how quickly Walker reacts. The shovel toss to Molina. All he's got to do is catch the ball, and Cody Ross is out. Well, the old one to two put out Kurt Gibson out there talking with Doug Eddings. Yeah, Cody had a lot to deal with there coming down that third baseline. You could clearly see that bat. And again, this falls under the, the heading of the new rules regarding catchers and home plate. And this is where it gets a little complicated in terms of the replay. You'll notice the bat right there in the baseline. Yeah, it looks like Molina initially was giving him a lane, and once he had the ball, you're allowed to block the plate. So yes. I think that's okay. Just uh, what we see right there. They call them collision calls at home plate. They are subject to unlimited review at the discretion of the crew chief, and in this case, the crew chief is the plate umpire. Another look. Well, you see Molina giving him a little bit of a lane to the outside the corner of the plate right there and then takes it away with the glove applies the tag. Unfortunately I, I didn't see anything illegal about what Yadier Molina did right there. This is not a challenge. Kirk Gibson is not burning a challenge here. If the call doesn't go his way, he can on these plays, and they're especially sensitive to it when you consider the new rule change this year. This is a crew chief review. This is not a Diamondback challenge. So you can request that they take a look because it's a play at the plate. And my understanding of the new rule is, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, the catcher has to give the runner a lane. He has to give him part of the plate to run to. And once you receive the ball, uh, you know, a lot of catchers are using the sweep tag nowadays. But once you receive the ball, once you have the ball, you're entitled to block home plate. The call on the field is confirmed. Cody Ross is out at home. The whole point of that is to get rid of the full speed collisions where the runner just comes in and tries to barrel the guy over. Yeah, that's what we were told at the seminar when the runner comes around third base and the catcher's already standing in front of home plate giving you nowhere to go other than right through him. That's the kind of plays they're trying to avoid. And so once the catcher has the baseball and is in front of home plate, 
the onus is then on the base runner. You cannot just run into the guy. You've got to slide and try to get around him, and that's what Cody did, but there was just nowhere to go. So two on, two out, and here's Gerardo Parra. That one is down the left field line and drifting into the seats. Boy, it would be huge if the Diamondbacks can somehow push across a run right here and get that one back. They gave up in the bottom of the fourth inning. Got great speed on at second base in A.J. Pollock, and with two outs, he's going to be running on contact. Just put the ball in play somewhere. Just about that timely hit. The Cardinals got it when Craig put one through the infield into left with two outs to score the run from third. Parr has lined out to first and struck out 0 for 2. You've got Pollock, the runner, at second. And McCarthy, the pitcher, is at first. Matt Adams. Walker covers, and that's the inning. Bottom five coming up. Diamondback trailing 1-0. Center here at Bush Stadium. Fans follow every D-backs game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. You'll get live look-ins, instant replay, score stats, audio, a free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Just download on the App Store or visit dbacks.com today. That Cardinal Nation building, you see that right there. That's what it looks like from here. That is a spectacular facility. It's a whole complex that they've spent the last couple of years building, and it just opened up this season. You've got a You've got a nightclub up there under the Budweiser brew house. This is what it looks like in the camera that is across the street from us here at the ballpark. But you've got some rooftop seating, the AT&T rooftop they've built in there. You've got a nightclub. You've got a uh, nice restaurant. You've got a bar and grill. There's a big rotunda in there where Fox Sports Midwest has a beautiful brand new studio. All kinds of stuff going on over there right across the street. They did a wonderful job with it. And really created that neighborhood atmosphere around the uh, around the ballpark. Yeah, there was uh, some disgruntled people because initially it was just a big pile of dirt out there beyond the left center field yeah. fence, but uh, it's come along nicely and really does uh, add to the ballpark here, add to the experience. Michael Walker takes strike one. Our Todd Walsh, uh, Todd, you were out there earlier, weren't you? Uh, no, actually, Steve, I, I'm I'm going to make my way over there tomorrow. I do know a guy who can get me up into some of the areas that. I think are roped off and cordoned <laughs> off, but I, I'm just glad there's something there because every time I looked at that pile of dirt, I, I think I've said this a thousand times, but I saw my first Major League Baseball game on that pile of dirt back in 76 with the great John Denny pitching against the, the Phillies, John Denny of Prescott, Arizona. El Herboski got the save that day, so I, I really want to go over there and sort of pay homage. What a play here, and they get Waka out, so 
I'll go over if you guys want to come over and join us. I mean, maybe do a little satellite broadcast. I don't know. Uh, we were over there. I went uh, with the, the Leo Gilmartin group. I was over there Monday on our off day with Leo and the governor, Greg Schulte and Tom Candiotti, and uh, we had a nice day over there. This is what it looks like inside. I mean, it's spectacular oh, over there. You can see nice. this. The TV's in there, and then there's a rotunda where they've got their studio, and there's another bar and grill, and then upstairs a nightclub, and some Wrigley Field-type rooftop seats on the very top of it. So Walker grounds out to open the fifth, and uh, it's funny, Bob, Chris Owings has started to make those plays look routine. I think we're already getting a little spoiled by the defense of our 22-year-old shortstop who just looks fantastic out there. You know, for me, watching Chris Owings, you know, you talk a lot about a guy's glove and his arm, but his, his feet and his body control really lends itself well to making plays just like that. And some guys, you, you spin around like that, they get dizzy and they lose their target. Matt Carpenter's got his second hit. Yeah, that's the amazing thing. When you're moving as fast as you can laterally, and then you do the full spin around, you, you do have to sort of find your center and, okay, where's the guy that I'm supposed to throw to here? Tremendous balance, keeps himself centered, and obviously he has the quickness and speed to cover all kinds of range to his right and left and still has plenty of arm to make that play in shallow center field. Who was the guy in your day that made that play the best? Oh, man, there was a bunch of them. I mean, obviously, Ozzie Smith, he made all the plays extremely well. I thought you might give me a Chris Spire or a Roger Metzger or one of those guys. Well, Chris Spire was really good, too. I'll tell you what, Chris Spire was the best I ever saw. Even to this day, I haven't seen anybody do it as well as he did. It was when the catcher makes that throw to second base on a stolen base attempt, and it short hops. Mm -hmm. The natural instinct for the infielder is to start with his glove low and come up to field the hop, and then you got to go back down with the tag. Chris Spire would hold his glove up waist high, and when that ball took a hop, he would always catch it on the way down so he could put the tag right down in front of the base. He saved me a lot of throwing errors and stolen bases. <laughs> Colton Wong. Speaking of stolen bases, Carpenter off for the pitch. It's popped up the very shallow center. A.J. Long run in, and he's got it for the second out. I'll bet that looked cool, too. The little snap oh, tag. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the first time I saw it, I, I said, wait a minute. That's going to go through. But he came down kind of like A.J. did on that ball when he dropped it out of his glove and his mm -hmm. glove was coming down and he managed to catch it. Well, Spire did the same thing on those low throws. He'd start above the ball and catch it on the way down. Never, uh, I've never seen anybody else do it uh, as efficiently and as consistently as Chris Spire was able to do it. I still always picture him as an expo. I know he's a mm -hmm. giant and everything, but came up with the Giants, right? Young, yeah, it was yeah, a younger portion of his yeah. career. But the uh, mustache and the Expo uniform, the whole thing. Matt Holliday. Tricolor hats. Still the greatest uniform ever. <laughs> you see how Holliday's arm is feeling. He was plunked on the front forearm by McCarthy his last time up, and he scored the game's only run. So that was costly for Brandon and painful for Holiday. Right on there, where the muscle part just below the elbow is where he got hit with a hard fastball. Yeah, you see some seam marks there. Yeah, you know if you can see the stitches of the baseball yeah. in your skin, that'd probably hurt. That hurt. And if you can see Alan Seelig's signature, you know he really got you well. You can read the H in the period. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> Who signed your arm? Nobody. I got hit. 2-0. There's a strike. Well, yeah, fortunately for Matt Holliday, it's a little below the elbow itself. You'd much prefer to have it down on the forearm rather than up on the biceps where all that swelling is going to drain down into the elbow joint. They'll have an ice bag on that after the game, guaranteed. Three and one now. Was, uh, in the fourth. It sounded bad. Yeah, it did.
pitch by Brandon 94 down and away and he got holiday to bite it's three and two is fourth full count tonight. Carpenter off with a pitch a little bouncer to second Aaron Hill from the outfield grass throws him out. We are through five Diamondbacks trail it one nothing. Your photo using the hashtag AZ Fan Photo for your chance to have it shown on our game broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Hopefully the governor and Leo will recover from their massive mistake yesterday. <laughs> that was a, the worst <laughs> picture of the year. You have to be in the picture. That should be you know, first day on the road. Uh, you go fishing one day, the whole thing it falls, falls apart. apart. Yep. The Brenly Committee. Chris Owings leads off the sixth against uh, Waka Waka. Owings, Goldie Montero, two, three, and four. Yeah, D-backs only two hits so far tonight, but uh, they've hit the ball well against Waka. There's been four line drive outs in this game. Parra back in the first, Goldie in the first, Chris Owings himself in the fourth, and Martin Prado in the fifth. All well struck balls. Find a hole. Waka has also walked three singles by Prado and Pollock so far. Walker grew up in Texarkana, Texas, like uh, Cliff Pennington. He's in A&M Aggie. And the Cardinals ended up with Walker. They got him in the first round just two years ago. He was the 19th overall selection in that draft, and that was the pick that St. Louis got as compensation from Anaheim for signing Albert Pujols. And there's no question that Albert Pujols has had a great career and a Hall of Fame career, the greatest hitter of his generation. But in terms of rebuilding your ball club, you make the decision to let Pujols go and not pay the money. You end up with Michael Walker. That's pretty good. As a matter of fact, you mentioned Albert Pujols on this date in baseball history in 2009. Big Albert knocked out the eye and Big Mac out there with a home run ball. Big Mac land hovering over left field. I think McGuire knocked that out too once, didn't he? I think he did, yeah. Kind of like uh, Robert Redford in the natural. <laughs> <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Chris Owens. Yeah, it's funny, Bob, watching CO in this at bat, and he had one like this last night where he fouled off. I think it was six, seven pitches in the AB against Wainwright. With that swing, he's got that short, quick, compact stroke. I think we're going to see a lot of at bats like this from him. 
Eighth pitch of the at bat right here. Another foul ball. That's six foul balls in this at bat by the young shortstop. Well, obviously, that pays dividends to the entire lineup. If you can force Walker to throw more pitches, more pitches, more pitches every at bat, that uh, ultimately is going to take something out of that right arm. He might make a mistake to a guy hitting behind CO in the lineup. He had seven foul balls and an 11 pitch at bat against Wainwright last night, and there's seven foul balls in this at bat against Walker tonight. I win the battle and I've talked about it before I always felt the advantage swings to the hitter the more pitches you can see time up that fastball weight on the off speed pitch out here Molina stalling for a little bit of time here walks out in front of the mound does, does some housekeeping or gardening now he wants Walker to kind of reset and not get frustrated or tired well, I think so you know Michael walk is not used to long at bats he usually puts people away rather quickly that was a very deliberate attempt by Yadier, who still hasn't given him a sign. Yeah, he's just making him wait out there, just trying to change the rhythm here. Get CO to step out of the box eventually. Big deep breath by Michael Walker. Chris Owings in the air to center. Peter Borges and his high socks are out there. How about the stirrups on Borges? Kind of been his trademark. I, I don't ever remember seeing him play any other way. His stripes or something else. It's quite a look. And, and you may have noticed Borges was going back on that ball. That was a routine fly to medium depth center field, but Peter Borges plays so shallow out there in center, trying to take away those humpback liners in front and trusting that his speed will get him back to the warning track quickly enough on a high fly ball. Now Goldie was up in the fourth with one out, nobody on. In his previous at bat, and Walker didn't throw anything near the plate. It was a clear pitch around a four pitch walk, and we'll see what he does here in the same situation. One out, nobody on. Now we're told by our people down in the truck that uh, between pitches took nearly 60 seconds, over 50 seconds between pitches as Yadier Molina stalled for time, and Chris Owings eventually stepped out of the box. It's a four corner. Slow it down. Well, it worked. He got him to fly out. An easy little fly to center. Two and two on Goldie. Who hit the ball hard to right his first time up and got the base on balls last time. They're getting their hacks against Waka. Haven't barreled one up yet, at least lately. Or some hard hit balls earlier, as Bob mentioned, but so they're making it work out there. There's no question. Right by him at 95. Four strikeouts for Waka, two down. Hey, fans, when the D backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACS50 at PapaJohns.com. Miguel Montero walked in the second, flying out in the fourth. He's 0 for 1. Miguel Montero, this is a ballpark uh, in which Miggy's always hit pretty well. He's played 21 games at Bush Stadium. He's hit better than 290 here, including five homers. Another foul ball in the inning. Warm, muggy night in downtown St. Louis. Thunderstorms earlier this afternoon. There's a threat. Later tonight, that is roll to first. Adams, good quickness over there for Big City. And that's the inning. Bottom six on the way, Diamondbacks. Trail the Cardinals, point up there.
on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Cox Communications. Bundle and save with Cox. St. Louis Mo, we're under the arch. This is where the governor, Greg Schulte, used to come and watch baseball at Old Sportsman's Park, watching Stan the Man back in the day. And now we're at uh, well, we're two stadiums removed, Old Bush Stadium yeah. and now New Bush. Brandon McCarthy out there for the home half of the sixth. They'll face Adams, Molina, Craig, four, five, and six. Brandon at 85 pitches. Oh, watch out. Into the dugout. Not a hit, Michael Walker. He's had line drives flying at him all night long. Keep an eye on Walker in there. You can find him. Yeah, he was back on the bench. Everybody else sitting up front kind of screened his view. He's being attended to now. That's one way to get him out of the game, I guess. Worse, it appears to have hit him in the right arm. Somewhere in the right arm or possibly. shoulder, maybe. 0-2 on Matt Adams after a couple of foul balls. Elbowed or looking at his right elbow. Greg Hawk, the head athletic trainer. Uh, so Derek Lilliquist, the pitching coach, checking out their starter. And Matt Adams hammers one to the gap in right center. It rolls to the wall. And he's in there standing at second with his 15th double. To take one more look at that line drive over in the right corner somewhere. We were told that there was kind of a ricochet off the back wall. He was sitting back there on the bench, uh, and as I mentioned, everybody else sitting up front, kind of screening his view and. When he jumped off the bench, it looked like a ricocheted off the wall and caught him on that right elbow somewhere. Well, Adams is in scoring position. Seventh Cardinal hit to lead off the inning. Yadier Molina. Right to Aaron Hill. Another first pitch swing by Molina, and they will check out Walker. And will go to the clubhouse and get checked out. I got to tell you, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled the plug on him in this game. He's such an important part of their rotation. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to risk running him back out there on the mound if he got hit hard near the elbow. Uh, some swelling in there. And then just the centrifugal force of throwing that baseball would, uh, I would think, really cause it to swell up and bleed even more. Well, the Cardinals had a busy series over the weekend, but they had the off day on Monday and then the Wainwright one hit complete game last night. So they have had at least two nights off. And it's not like they're completely out of options back there. Mike Harkey to the mound. And now here comes Eddings to break this up. Yeah, Cardinals have a few guys just stirring around down there in that right field bullpen, but uh, doesn't look like anybody throwing yet. Seagrass is the lefty. Adams on second. Alan Craig is two for two. He's driven in the game's only run with a two out single in the fourth. And there goes Big City. Well, you don't see a lot of guys at 6'3, 260 stealing third. Well, neither infielder close to the bag at second. Brandon McCarthy just a cursory glance back there, assuming he wasn't going to run. 
actually stole that rather easily. Another horrible slide. I'll tell you, that's a lost art in the game of baseball. Just the ability to slide to the base and stop. A straight steal of third is the first of Matt Adams' career. The guys not work on it enough? Apparently not. I, I mean, we've seen guys all year long slide through the bag, jam their leg into the bag, get their foot caught on the bag and fall off, get tagged out. Is it because more runners nowadays than most seem to slide headfirst? Yeah, and as we've seen what happens when you slide head first, so they're trying to encourage players to slide feet first. But if you don't know how to do it properly, you're just as at risk of an injury sliding feet first. And Michael Walker has returned from the Cardinal Clubhouse talking with pitching coach Derek Lilliquist right here. So far, six scoreless, only two hits allowed. He has walked three. I think you got to get him out of there. <laughs> just for his own protection. <laughs> Let's shut the kid down right now. Two balls, no strikes to Allen Craig. Adams at third. Infield in on the grass. It's 3 0. I wonder if perhaps this is a pitch around on the part of Brandon McCarthy. The problem is Peter Borges in the on deck circle has great speed. Tough, tough guy to double up. At Nishek with that to sidearm motion is quickly warming up for the Cardinals. Rio misses up and in. Ball four. McCarthy has walked two and hit a batter. Oliver Perez. Borges is always a threat to bunt as well. Had two bunt hits in his last game against the Chicago Cubs. Adams is at third. Craig's at first. Borges is flied out and walks. And if you're looking for the double play ball, it's a tough guy to double up right here with that speed up the line. Off the fist, little pop up third base side. Owings wants it. They got it right there. So two on now, two out. Descalso. He's 0 for 2, struck out looking his last time. McCarthy at 96 pitches on a hot night in St. Louis. Pitcher spawn is due up next. There's John Jay creeping into your picture. Almost threw it behind Montero. 1-0. Gibson had the lefty Perez up and ready. We've got a lefty up, a lefty on deck, and two more lefties at the top of the Cardinal order. Pitch number 99. Broken bat right back to the mound. Nice job there by Brandon McCarthy to strand two. And through six, it is still 1-0 Cardinal.
is over. New pitcher for the Cardinals. The submarine motion of 33 year old right hander Pat Bishek. It's the first year in St. Louis after spending the last two years in Oakland. He has pitched very well so far for Mike Matheny right there. 21 appearances an ERA of one. 21 punch outs against only three walks. Very abbreviated wind up almost like a quick pitch. Sinker slider combination. He'll throw an occasional straight change up to a left handed hitter. Violent motion from Nishek. So uh, they listen to you, Bob, and they got walk out of there. I think that's right course of action. And the Diamondbacks looking for some offense. Now they'll try their luck with Nishek. They haven't scored a run since Eric Chavez is homer in the fifth inning Sunday against the Dodgers. They are now with 18 straight scoreless innings or two full games without a run. Aaron Hill leads off the seventh. Gibson parking at home plate. Umpire Doug Eddings looked like that slider kind of came around the inside corner of the plate. You see that abbreviated windup by Nishek. Hitting is all about rhythm and timing, and he's doing everything he can to disrupt the opposing hitter's timing with that windup. Just kind of walks into the pitch. The sixth round pick by the Twins back in the 0-2 draft out of Butler University. Played four years with Minnesota, one year in San Diego, and spent the last two years with the Oakland A's. This is inside there. It's even two balls and two strikes. Aaron Hill is twice flagged out to right, 0 for 2. Hits this one hard to center. It backs up Borges. One away. Well, it's that time. Let's see what uh, you've come up with here. Time for the AT&T fan photo of the game using the hashtag AZ fan photo. And the winner is from the Brenly committee, Tony. Doesn't he look happy? He's just glad to be at the ballpark. I mean, the grounds crew is on the field, and he's happy. Well, it's a it's a picture of an actual person, so it's a step up from That's last start. night's debacle. Yeah. Step in the right direction. And he took the governor off, and we got it back, so thanks to... All of you tweeting in your fan photos using the hashtag AZ fan photo. And don't uh, forget, if we don't pick your picture that night, we can pick it another night. There's a pool of them that uh, stay active. It's all brought to us by AT&T. Nishak quickly ahead of Martin Prado 0-2. Very herky-jerky. A lot of differences between this motion and Brad Ziegler. Brad's is at least a little fluid. Easy roller to Colvin Wong, two down. How about the night Michael Walker had? Uh, hits great, but other than that, they were out to get him. Yeah, dodged a bullet off the bat of Martin Prado early in the game. That ball was headed right for his right shoulder, and then Big City Adams lines one into that first base dugout, ricocheted off the back wall, and thought the Cardinals starter in the right elbow had to come out of the ball game. So he goes six, gives up only two hits. He walked three, struck out four. Strike one to Cody Ross. Cody walked his last time up. It was the thrown out at home plate on a nice bunt attempt by Brandon McCarthy, in which Walker made a terrific play. Ishek in here, firing strikes. And he's not messing around. Works really quickly too. It's out of play. Nishek last pitched on Sunday against the Braves. Worked only one third of an inning. Cody just throws his bat at that one and drops it into center for a base hit. It's something where they say, well, he threw his bat 
at that pitch. He actually threw it that yeah, time. Yeah, he did. <laughs> See, the best I ever saw was Bill Buckner. Billy Buck, when he'd get to two strikes, he would throw his bat at the ball like that just to foul it off, stay alive, occasionally get a base hit. Yeah, you can laugh about that one now. And take them all. Take them all. So Cody's been on base twice a walk and a single. And here's A.J. who had a base hit his last time up. I think perhaps uh, Nishek is in this ball game because he gets ready quicker than anybody else in that bullpen. That happened rather fast there in that last inning after Waka was hit and the Diamondbacks made the third out. Because when you take Waka into the clubhouse, while the Cardinals are hitting, you're you're not still sure unless you're going to take him out, depending on what the trainers tell you. Well, that's a great point. They needed someone to jump. Jump up and get right in there. Get ready quick. And also, the Cardinals have the pitcher spot leading off in the bottom half of the inning. So, Nishek come in here, just pitches one inning of work. They'll have a pinch hitter leading off the inning and then turn the ball over to somebody else. A ball and a strike to A.J. Pollock. He has singled and struck out. Three had him out in front. One and two. Left hander Randy Choate cranking it up with Eric Chavez standing in the on deck circle who would hit for Brandon McCarthy. And Mike McPhee wants to counter that with his own lefty. So getting him up and ready to go. Choate is seriously a short duty guy. He sometimes doesn't even finish at bats. This miss is there. Pollock is even two and two. Veteran Randy Choate. Talk about the classic stereotypical lefty specialist. The loogie. The lefty one out guy. Those are the kind of guys that help you win postseason games. Two two. Can't quite hang on, and AJ is still alive. Is our foul tips luck? I mean, granted, some guys are going to be better than others. But if he hangs on there, that's a very tough play. I'm not, this is not a knock on Molina. But if he hangs on there, the game's over. Well, that would look like it got him up in the chest protector. But yeah, I mean, it, it's just luck. Either it hits in your glove or it doesn't. I mean, you're talking about a couple of feet between contact and your mitt. <laughs> There's no yeah. way you make an adjustment. You just have to get lucky. And the great Yadier Molina. Anybody better than him defensively for you? No. There's some guys that are good defensive catchers, you know, solid all the way around, but nobody better. The way he handles a pitching staff, his knowledge of opposing hitters, his ability to throw out runners, blocking balls in the dirt. I don't know if there's a more indispensable player to his team than Yadier Molina. I mean, uh, if they lose Yadi, uh, I don't care who his backup is right now. It's Tony Cruz, but uh, that is a serious drop off. Well, he did get two first plates, first place NL MVP votes last year. Two more than Paul Goldschmidt got. At Carpenter, nice scoop at third. They go the short way for the force on Ross, and that's the inning. Stretch time in St. Louis. It's still a one nothing ball game.
Express presented by Cox Communications and Fry's Food Stores is set to take you to a D-backs game. Just stop by this month's participating Fry's Food Store in Cottonwood or the Cox Solution Store in Mesa. And you can enter to win two seats on the Fan Express bus. They will take you to and from the D-backs game either June 8th or June 22nd. For more information, visit FoxSportsArizona.com. Home half for the seventh and a one nothing ball game in St. Louis and the new pitcher for the Diamondbacks is the left-hander Oliver Perez. He has been outstanding as of late. The ERA is down to 363. In his last 14 appearances, he has given up just two earned runs. Yeah, that's a curse of a short relief pitcher, a guy that comes in uh, to face one or two hitters or maybe an inning at a time. If you have one bad outing, it takes uh, the better part of the season to whittle that ERA back down to respectability, but Oliver Perez well on his way to doing that. And he's a guy that has had command issues in the past. The walk total, especially when he was a starter, could get out of control, but over his last 13 innings, 16 strikeouts and only three walks. Pitcher spot will lead off the inning, and this is Shane Robinson just called up from AAA Memphis today. Joey Butler was sent down to the minor leagues. And there's the strike on one. Robinson sent down to AAA April 27th after a two for 20 start. They brought up a couple of other guys trying to get the offense going. In the meantime, Robinson got some everyday at bats at Memphis, something he wasn't getting here. And did very well, played 18 games down there, hit 371. One for nine as a pinch hitter before his demotion to AAA. You mentioned two for 20 overall, so uh, most of his at bats have been off the bench. And it's tough to get going that way, I imagine. Oh, yeah. That's why, if given their choice, most managers would much prefer to have the veterans on the bench. You know, a guy like Eric Chavez. Yeah. You know, you know he can go up there and maybe he hasn't played in three or four days, but he's still going to give you a good quality major league at bat late in the ball game. Uh, you have those younger players filling that role. They're used to being everyday players, getting four or five at bats a day in the minor leagues, and suddenly they find themselves sitting for a week at a time. That's a tough way to go. And Arte, a left hand bat on Kirk Gibson's bench. Now he's a guy that came up when AJ had that groin injury and immediately played almost every day. And since AJ came back, Ender has been hard pressed to get some at bats. Another one, too. We'll see how Gibby plays him. But with the pitcher spot leading off in the top half of the eighth inning, we did see Eric Chavez in the on deck circle because it was a runner on base. But now leading off an inning, he may choose to switch it up and go with Enciarte and the speed, try to get the inning jump started. 9 1 and 2 do up in the Arizona eighth. 2 2. Well, especially since the guys that the Cardinals figure to close the game with are all right handed. So you probably want to save Chavez in the event uh, you need a guy to go up there and jack one out of the ballpark late. And if you let Chavez lead off, even if he gets on, you're probably going to run in CRT for him anyway. Shane Robinson did play 99 games with St. Louis last year. Hit 250, couple of home runs. He's a little guy up there, 5'9, 165. A fifth round pick in 06 out of Florida State. He's a Seminole. Diamondbacks live with Todd Walsh follows the ball game here on Fox Sports Arizona. Another 2 2. It's full. In the air, it'll back up Para in right. Extended at bat by Robinson, but there is one away in the seven. Oliver Perez, 32 years old, he'll turn 33 in August. He's been a Met, a Pirate, a Pondre, a Mariner, and now a Diamondback. 
very good year last year with Seattle. 61 appearances, a 3.74 ERA. Evan Marshall and Neil Stoudemire Jr. pitching a bullpen coach. And boy, Evan Marshall has looked good. It looked like Bob, he was being told, okay, out there in the bullpen. All right, here's what's going to happen if this guy gets on. You come in. If not, then no. And the pitchers constantly want to be appraised as to what's going on. That's why you always see the bullpen coach with the clipboard, with the lineup, the scouting report, standing right by the pitcher. And as the inning progresses, and you now the Cardinal makes an out. Now a guy comes up to the plate. Well, this is not your guy. This will be Ollie's guy. But if this guy happens to reach, he'll be in there for Matt Holliday. Carpenter grounds out, two down. Throw a few pitches, stroll around, get some gum, loosen up, watch for a bit, throw another ball or two. Actually, that's a good sign for a young pitcher. A lot of times a guy, uh, phone will ring and they'll say, get Evan Marshall up and he'll start cranking and throw 75 pitches down there before you know what happened. And when he goes into the ball game, he's exhausted. Another call coming in right now. Yeah, just pitch along with the inning. Know which guy it is that you're probably going to face and just make sure you're ready to go when that guy gets up to the plate. Holden Long is 0 for 3. Is that a jet ski? No, it's one of those uh, elliptical. <laughs> no, the, uh, what do you call it? Recumbent. Recumbent yeah, yeah. bicycles. They're a complete waste of time. But they'll keep the legs loose. Is, is there an art to we always hear about a guy who's got to warm up but then you got to stay warm while you're out there waiting to actually get in the game right well what will happen a lot of times like if Evan Marshall doesn't get into the ball game this inning yeah, he'll probably come in to face Matt Holiday the next thing but what I was going to say is you know you're in a holding pattern out there and you're already loosened up and ready to go into the ball game so when the Diamondbacks come out to play defense in the next bottom of the inning Evan Marshall would be the guy to go play catch with the outfielder just oh, okay. to keep his arm loose a little bit. I don't know that that's a fact with Evan, but I know that's what a lot of guys will do. Once they're cranked up and ready to go, they just play catch with the outfielder between innings. Little flare, shallow center. It's over the head of Owings in front of Pollock and Colton Wong. Little dying quail, two out single. No, I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. I would have guessed that Evan Marshall is going to come into this ball game to face Matt Holliday. How long could you keep a guy? It's like a car engine idling out there. How long could you keep him out there before you actually got to sit him down or bring him in? Yeah, it, it, you know, it's very subjective with guys, but uh, I think if you if you warm up properly, like we were talking about, get close, pitch along with the inning, you guys can. Usually three times. If you get a guy up three times in the bullpen, you either have to bring him in the game or sit him down. That seems like a lot. Up and down, up and down three times. Matt Holliday was hit by a pitch to lead off the fourth. That has been the game's only run. Came in on a two-out single by Alan Craig. We've seen Kirk Gibson do this a number of times this year with varying results, leaving the lefty in to face a tough right-handed hitter because the on-deck hitter is Matt Adams, another tough lefty. So, uh, I don't know. This is uh, rolling the dice. It's worked out for him a few times. It's backfired a few times. He does this a lot with Joe Thatcher when you've got the righty in between two lefties. And you got to hope for your best when the left-hander is in there against the right-hand hitter, in this case, Holiday. But you've got two outs and a righty ready to go. But it's Perez versus Holiday here. Long the runner at first, two down. Now part of the reason could be Matt Holiday's two for 16 lifetime. There you see the splits for Matt Holiday. And it's not like he's crushing left hand pitching. Green one. But this is a guy who's a six time all star who can drive the ball gap to gap, consistent run producer. A dangerous pitch coming up here, 3 1. A good matchup career wise for the D backs, Holiday versus Perez.
Strike two. Hold on, Matt. I'm shocked he took that pitch. It was a belt high fastball right down the middle of the plate. You're looking for a knuckleball. Doug Eddings. So it's full three and two. Two outs. Wong will be off from first on the pitch. And he's got good speed. There he goes. Out of play. Well, the good news here is that Holiday hasn't homered in a long time. It's been April 28th, now 18 games without a home run. And during that span, he's only got three extra base hits, so it's not like he's really driving the ball right now. Most of, it, of his hits have been to center and right field. Well, there is always the possibility that Colton Wong get picked yeah, off. There's always that possibility. We have seen that before. And then Marshall, the motor still running out there. Right to Goldie. Oliver Perez strands that two out loop single and sends us to the eighth. Diamondbacks down one nothing. Our APS Energy All-Stars tonight starting pitchers. And once again, we talked about this. Both guys in the bottom 10 among National League starters in run support. And it's a one nothing ball game. Some things never change. But both Brandon McCarthy and Michael Walker pitch very well. Outstanding ball game for both starting pitchers tonight. Pretty much what we've come to expect from Brandon McCarthy lately. And so we've seen Neshek for the Cardinals. And now the eighth inning. It'll be their 22 year old Dominican right hander. This is Carlos Martinez. And he's worked to an ERA this year just under four. He was a valuable pitcher, Bob, in the postseason. Got a lot of big outs for these guys that worked to almost 13 innings during their World Series run, gave up only seven hits. It's uh, been a trademark of the Cardinals recently. Call those kids up from the minor leagues and just fire them right into the heat. Eric Chavez, first pitch, just dunks it into left for a leadoff single, and the tying runs aboard with nobody out here in the eighth. And now, as you mentioned, you got to run for him. So here comes Ender Inciarte. Well, Eric has had a very productive bat as of late, both as a starter and off the bench. A couple of home runs over the weekend. And now a big single to get things going in the eighth. And Enciarte with terrific speed is the runner at first. Paro for three, he struck out in the third. Boy, 
and Martinez can rush it up there. His average fastball this season right at 97 miles per hour. He also throws a real hard slider. Does have a changeup, but rarely uses it. Hara drives that one deep to right. Craig at the wall looking up and it is gone a home run. Gerardo Parra his fifth and just like that it's 2 1 D backs. Their first run since the fifth inning on Sunday and suddenly the Diamondbacks have the lead. A pinch single and a homer to lead off the eighth. Just got enough of it to sneak it over the fence out there into the Cardinals bullpen. Got a fastball out over the plate where he could extend his arms. Alan Craig all the way back to the barrier. The only guy that's going to catch that is the bullpen catcher. And this is not a ballpark in which Parra has ever hit very well. He's coming into tonight 16 games, a 220 average at Bush and only four extra base hits, but he makes it a 2 1 ball game. And now we are going to warn the benches. The home run, they come inside to Owings, and Doug Eddings has warned both Kurt Gibson and Mike Matheny. First pitch after the homer is up and in to CO. And Molina set up on the outside corner. Obviously, that one sails up and in, and Doug Eddings decides he's just not going to let anything get out of hand here. Quickly issues a warning to both benches. Yadier Molina pleading the case. Now Mike Matheny will pick up the argument. What do you think about the warning? Well, I, I think, you know, given the history of the Cardinals, I mean, say what you will about Tony LaRusa, but they had a reputation of being a team that uh, wasn't afraid to throw inside, occasionally drilling guys, especially in retaliation if they felt they were hit intentionally. And I think Mike Matheny learned his lessons well. Gibby's in the dugout laughing. I mean, Holiday did take that one in the forearm. But that was back in the fourth inning. But we haven't had that I can recall anything no, since really in terms hasn't. of stare downs or, no. you know, guys giving each other dirty looks or something. I mean, Martinez has uncorked three wild pitches in 23 innings. He's walked nine guys in his 23 innings of work. So it's possible he was a little over ramped there, tried to overthrow that fastball and it just got away from him. But, uh, Doug Eddings doesn't want to let the game get away from him. Throws a 99 mile an hour fastball for a strike and comes up and in again. Now, what's the difference between the first pitch of this at bat and that pitch? Thank you. If you're going to warn him with no previous knockdown pitches, why wouldn't you eject him right now? That makes no sense. Two and one. Right down the heart of the plate for a strike at 88. It's two and two. I mean, once the warning is issued, you do actually have to hit the batter, don't you? Before no, they're not necessarily. No. If, the, if in the umpire's judgment he feels that the pitch was thrown intentionally to hit the guy, then you can eject him right away. You don't even have to issue a warning, technically. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the first out. Now here's Goldie. Strike one. And you know the Diamondbacks will be watching this at bat especially closely. That's a foul ball. So quickly it's 0 2. Yeah, with Mickey in the on deck circle, I was just looking down at Kirk Gibson and uh, he whistled out to Miguel Montero and gave the sign for a fastball and pointed to left field. Telling Miggy, you know, get on one of those heaters and drive it the opposite way. I think a lot of times guys try to swing as hard as the pitcher is throwing. All you have to do is make solid contact. You can hit a home run to the opposite field. That's popped up behind the Cardinal dugout. See if Miggy takes that approach when he gets up there. Look for something out over the plate and try to drive it to left field. And this guy can bring it. We've seen some 99s. That is oh. very well hit high and deep to center, but it's going to die at the track for Borges. Two down. 
Boy, that was loud contact. Unfortunately, all the energy went straight up in the air. Let's go downstairs to Todd. Todd, what's going on down there? Uh, I'll tell you what, Steve. This has been a fascinating couple of moments at field level just outside the Diamondbacks' dugout. I don't think most of the guys saw that first pitch to Owings because they were still celebrating the Parra home run. But then the attention was certainly focused over here in the dugout. They were trying to make Chris Owings relax a little bit before he went into the batter's box. Somebody said, hey, if you get hit, just run down to first. We'll see what happens. He did smile in the batter's box there. But now Kirk Gibson has actually told Miguel Montero, stall a little bit up there when you get to the plate. Just told him, tie your shoe. High drama down here at field level. It's been a terrific ball game. Two good starting pitching performances. A little drama in terms of the brushbacks. And a big home run by Gerardo Parra here in the eighth has made it 2-1. And now with two outs of the bases empty, it's 1-0 to Miggy. He walked in the second. He's 0 for 2. And so far, Martinez just trying to stay away away with those first two deliveries. Granted, they were in the upper 90s, but everything away from Miggy. Staying away, 96, three balls and no strikes. Cardinals have a whole bunch of young bullpen arms coming up through their system. And they have really talked about Rosenthal throughout this series. They've just got Jason Mott back from Tommy John, but they have Martinez. Segrist, the lefty, who was so good last year. There's rebuilding and reloading. They just reload these guys. Three and one. Two out walk to Montero. Brings up Aaron Hill. His first game back from the sore shoulder so far 0 for 3, three fly ball outs. Another big crowd here at Bush Stadium. 40,000 plus. Every home game this year for the Cardinals. They've had at least 40,000. They've had 20 home games. This is number 20 and 10 sellouts. Cardinal Nation. Strike one. 98. Seth Manus, the right hander. Slider at 88. He throws it occasionally, but really has trouble commanding that pitch. Martin Prado doing some carpentry over there in the on-deck circle. And catch up to 96. Down, it's one and two. A little bit off that fastball got some sinking action down and in underneath the bat of Aaron Hill. Got him. Diamondbacks leave one, but they get to Gerardo Parra. His fifth of the year will head to the home half of the eighth. The Diamondbacks lead the Cardinals 2 1.
managing. Joe Thatcher, the left-hander, is on to work the eighth inning for the Diamondbacks. He will likely get only one hitter. His 19th appearance of the year. Big City Matt Adams, the powerful left-hand hitter, is set to lead off the eighth for the Cardinals. Brad Ziegler has been throwing in the D-backs bullpen, so you would think that Thatcher is in here just to work to Adams. It certainly would seem so. You've got three right-handers stacked up after Matt Adams. And Brad Ziegler has been equally effective against lefties this year, so I think you're absolutely right. Joe Thatcher on to face one hitter. Big City has single, double these two for three. He's also stolen a base, if you can believe that. There's the strike, 0 and 1. Mike Matheny wants to talk to Doug Eddings. Now, Kurt Gibson, we talked about. Double switched. He got Inciarte. He remained in the game to play left. So the pitcher spot is now seventh in the Diamondback order. And all the paperwork appears to be up to snuff. Popped him up. Very shallow left center. And then they're in Ciarte trying to back up the play for Owings. Got perhaps a little too close for comfort, but it's one out. And now we should see Ziegler. Here comes Kirk Gibson. So Joe Thatcher comes in, throws two pitches, and does his job. Gets the out. Adams, a guy who can tie the ball game on one swing, certainly. But now you've got Molina and Craig, two very dangerous hitters coming up. And the Diamondbacks will go to Ziegler. We'll be back after this from St. Louis. was hit by a pitch to open up the fourth then with holiday on third and two outs in the inning Alan Craig drove in the game's first run and for a long time it stayed one nothing Cardinals until Gerardo Parra in the top of the game well, that was the thing as dominating as the two starting pitchers were in this ball game uh, it, it felt like more than a one run deficit but you know you get a guy on and somebody hits one out of the ballpark all of a sudden you have a one run lead that's nicely our done Gila River game summary and now it's up to Brad Ziegler on with one out in the gate to work to Molina and Craig. Yadier Molina has swung at the first pitch his last six at bats. Make it seven. That's cool. <laughs> foul ball, foul ball, foul ball, a double, the fly ball that A.J. Pollock caught in left center, a line out, and then a foul ball here. Seven consecutive at bats chasing that first pitch. His single in the second extended his hit streak to nine games. Six of those nine are two hit games. So they've been coming in bunches, but he's down 0 2 right by Jose Yakendo at third. 
Not a big history I saw you looking up between these two, right? Yeah, I almost overlooked it. Uh, three previous at bats for Yadier Molina against Brad Ziegler. One for three, unfortunately, it was a home run. Off there, a ball and two strikes. Threw the bat at it, and the bat went farther than the ball did. <laughs> Emergency swing. We saw Cody Ross get a base hit like that back in the seventh. Slider working its way off the outside corner of the plate. Yadier just lets the bat go, trying to get a piece of it. Small sample size. I still want you to think seriously about a neck tattoo. I, I think you could pull that off. I will if you will. <laughs> Down the line in left, but that ball is foul. How many tattoo conversations started off that way? <laughs> well, sometimes after a couple of beverages, and next thing you know, you look like Mike Tyson when you wake up in the morning. What he is saying. You talk about self-defense mode. He's throwing the bat at the ball. He's running up there into the left-hand batter's box to hit it. Anything to stay alive. And that's why he's the hitter that he's become. 331 on the year coming into tonight's seventh pitch of the at-bat. In the air to right, Para. Long run, and he won't get there. Molina heads for second. It's another two hit ball game for Yadier Molina. His seventh in the last nine games, and that's his 11th double. Well, we laugh about those emergency swings, but it forces Brad Ziegler to come back in there one more time. That looked like a change up down over the middle of the plate. Molina with that inside out swing just shot it over the head of Gerardo Parra in right field. If G comes up with a cleanly right there, I think he might have a chance to throw out Molina or maybe hold him to a single. But once he bobbled that ball, it turned into an easy double. Five foul balls in that at bat, and Molina works the count into a one-out double. Here's Craig, who drove in the Cardinal only run. Ball one. He's got two hits and a walk. He's been on base three times. Craig this season hitting under 190 against right-handers. 0 for 5 lifetime against Brad Ziegler. He had an RBI base hit back in that uh, fourth inning when the Cardinals scored their run. He was hitting 220 with runners in scoring position this year. That'll go up a little bit. Last year he hit 454 with runners in scoring position. And he's hit over 300 each of the last three years. But a 220 coming into the ball game tonight. Molina the tying run at second, one out. Reaches down and shoots it into right. It drops in. Molina had to hold up, and he'll stop at third. And they almost throw it away. With only one out, Molina had to be sure that would fall, so he'll stay at third with one out, and the Cardinals have runners in the corners. Slider right on the outside corner. Craig hits it off the end of the bat. Molina broke for third initially and then froze in his tracks to make sure that ball got down. And he realizes now he has no chance of scoring, just walks on into third base. Mike Harkey to the mound. 
Peter Borges is scheduled up. Looks like we're going to see John Jay instead. What's the discussion here? Well, just uh, looking at all the options. John Jay, another guy that could possibly try to bunt for a base hit. Jason Mott just activated yesterday after a year off recovering from Tommy John surgery is up as is Trevor Rosenthal who was held down the back end of the Cardinal bullpen while Mott was on the shelf for a year. It's kind of hard to believe but John Jay is tied for the team lead with Alan Craig grounding into double plays this year. You would think a left handed hitter with his kind of speed wouldn't ground into a lot of double plays and of course Brad Ziegler that's, uh, that's what he's all about getting those ground balls and turning two. and you are looking for that here with runners on the corners and one out Molina the tying run at third Craig the go ahead run at first here is Jay who got the start last night in center went one for three with a double. Jay has not hit a whole lot lately. Just 205 over his last 18 games. Center field, AJ Pollock playable. Molina tags. He will score. The game is tied. Long at bat by Molina. All those foul balls. A double. And now the tying run here in the eighth. Daniel Descalso. Brad Ziegler's worked a lot lately. A whole lot. AJ, that's the inning. But the Cardinals tied up. Molina, a one out double. It's 2 2 through 8, Century League. Your link to what's next. Prado, the pitcher spot, and Pollock when we come back. Army's Gold Star Pin Campaign, which honors the families of fallen service members. You can learn more 
by visiting goldstarpins.org. All tied in the ninth in St. Louis. Two runs for the Diamondbacks, two runs for the Cardinals, and now the Cardinals will go to their fourth pitcher tonight. It's Trevor Rosenthal, who's worked a ton lately, actually was uh, had worked four days in a row. He had two off, and now he's back on. You see Doug Eddings go out there and uh, let Trevor Rosenthal know that warnings are in effect. Every pitcher that comes into the ball game will receive a verbal notice from the home plate umpire. Rosenthal with another big arm out of that Cardinals bullpen average fastball just over 96 miles an hour has a straight change up and an occasional slider but uh, you're gonna see a lot of heaters eight out of ten pitches. John Jay who had the sacrifice fly that uh, tied up the ball game pinch hitting for Peter Borges stays in the game he'll replace Borges in center. Martin Prado leads off the ninth pitcher spot after the double switch is due up next and Alfredo Marte is in the on deck circle. Pitcher spot now seventh in the Arizona lineup. 2-0. So Brad Ziegler's worked a lot lately. Had a couple of base hits and a run allowed in that eighth. We'll see if all the wear and tear as of late has a similar effect on Trevor Rosenthal. There's a strike. 94-2-1. Tapper to second easy play for Colton Wong one away. We are back here tomorrow with you on Fox Sports Arizona for the series finale. It's our Chevron upcoming pitching matchup. Wade Miley the left hander against Lance Lynn. And then it's off after that ball game to New York for three against the Mets at City Field. Don't forget tomorrow is a getaway day so we come your way an hour earlier. Diamondback Live pregame show with 3.30 on Fox Sports Arizona. That's a 6.15 local start. Alfredo Marte hitting for the pitcher. Looks at strike one. Marte 5 for 18 to open the year with three RBIs. That includes two for four as a pinch hitter this year. Trevor Rosenthal suffered a second blown save and a loss on Sunday. He had saved the previous three games, so four straight days out there for Rosenthal, who humps that one up at 95, one of two. He was off on the off day Monday, certainly off last night after Adam Wainwright threw a one-hit shutout, so he's back out there. Yikes. Two down. Oh, just blows it right by Marte up there above the letters. That four seamer at that velocity seems to have a little hop at the end. That time Marte just couldn't catch up. AJ Pollock. AJ singled in the fifth. He's one for three. Blazer at first rule that he went, so it's 0 1. Now, Evan Marshall, motor still running out there. He's been joined by Addison Reed. Hard to third, Carpenter. Rosenthal, a one, two, three, ninth, bottom nine coming up.
Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. That is the legendary Chuck Berry. There's something wrong with that picture though. Left handed pitcher Tyler Lyons is on the disabled list right now. He's going to sign the ball for Chuck Berry. I think I'd do it the other way around. No, question. please, Mr. Berry, you sign the ball. Fifth pitcher of the ball game for the D backs. This is the right hander, Evan Marshall. He'll work to the pitcher spot. Then the top of the order, it's Matt Carpenter and Colton Wong. He has yet to give up a run this year. And with the pitcher spot leading off the inning, we'll see Mark Ellis for the Cardinals. Fives and zeros on there for Evan Marshall is yet to give up an earned run in his five innings of work struck out five is yet to walk about it. Mark Ellis last year played in over 120 games with the Dodgers. And he is here in St. Louis at the age of 36. He'll turn 37 next month. 185 on the year. He has started 18 ball games all at second base. Most of them during Colton Wong's quick trip back down to Triple A Memphis. There's a strike on one. A lot to like about this young man. Well, that was an important first pitch right there. The ability to throw that slider for a strike. I'm sure the word is getting around. The advanced scouts have seen Evan Marshall five times now. They know he's got that heavy power sinker and his ability to throw that slider up there for strike one that plants a little seed of doubt in the hitter's mind. I don't think that's especially effective when he gets ahead in the count. Just misses down and away two balls and a strike. Mark Ellis a ninth round pick by the Royals back in the ninety nine draft. He was one of the glue guys with the Dodgers we talked about. We've mentioned Skip Schumacher earlier throughout the series, and he was in L.A. last year, as was Ellis and Nick Punto, guys like that, no longer with the Dodgers this season, and you kind of wonder who's the clubhouse leaders in there. I can still remember that uh, game at Dodger Stadium when Yasiel Puig airmailed that ball all the way over every cutoff man, over everybody, and Mark Ellis was just standing there pointing at second base the whole time. Throw it there. Throw it here. 2-2. Two, two. Well, this game has been an absolute clinic on how to stay alive with two strikes. Hitters on both sides. Broke the bat in half. Chris Owings. One away. Oh, some guys throw that heavy sink. <laughs> now that's firewood. It's like hitting a bowling ball. Get those vibrations. If you don't square it up right on the barrel of the bat, this one out near the end, the bat just explodes. Mark Ellis felt those vibrations all the way to his molar teeth. And that thing was just boring down, too. One out, top of the order, Matt Carpenter. He is two for four, a pair of singles. One and one. 
Fly ball to center. Routine for AJ. Two down. Oh, we had a big crowd here tonight. Another crowd of 40,000 plus. But when you go to Cardinal games, and for some folks, it's a two or three hour drive. I mean, they come from all over the Midwest here. But there you go, BB. You can't tell if the seat is empty or not with all the red shirts and the red seats. Some fans have left. So a lot of us uh, stuck around. Cardinals very much a regional draw, much like the Cincinnati Reds. They draw from all the surrounding areas and states. But you get to the latter stages of the ball game here where the night looks like it might be long and people have long drives back home. The ballpark always looks like it's still full. Long run for Enciarte. Can't quite get there. And you can see all the red shirts there in your picture and all the red seats. And when you step back, as Bob has pointed out, you're not, you could have 40,000 in here or 20. It's hard to tell. You can see the background there, all the red shirts. Were the Reds like that when you were a kid in Coshocton? Oh, yeah. I remember many times, uh, you know, we always ate dinner early because my dad would get home from work around 4 o'clock and the Reds played at 7. And, hey, you want to shoot down to Cincinnati and see a ball game? Yeah, about a two-hour, 45-minute trip. Absolutely. We'd jump in the car and off we'd go. And a lot of times we had to leave before the end of the ball game to make that two-hour and 45-minute trip back home. You listen on the radio? Oh, yeah. Marty and Joe. Joe Nuxall. Joe's the best. I think this might have been one of Joe's anniversaries today on this day in baseball history. I remember driving to go to a Reds game a long time ago when Joe Nuxall was doing the radio. And there was a conference at the mound and Joe Nuxall, uh, Marty asked him, well, what's he going to go out and say to him here, Joe? And Joe said, well, he's going to go over there and say three simple words. Get the ball over. <laughs> <laughs> I almost drove off the road. <laughs> Called strike three. We will play extras in St. Louis. Evan Marshall, a 1 2 3 ninth, including a strikeout there. And we are headed to the 10th at Bush. Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Feed it. Kids at the ballpark at Bush. Hey, dude, that's my hat. <laughs> oh, he was mad. Do not disrespect the lid. No, he's got the fenders on it just the way he likes it. Don't touch it. <laughs> Randy Choate, the Cardinals' fifth pitcher tonight. We'll open up the 10th. 
Ender and Ciarte, Gerardo Parra, and Chris Owings. So you've got the two left-handers here who started out for the D-backs. And so here is the veteran Randy Choate with an ERA near six and a half. Ender and Ciarte came on to pinch run in the eighth inning after Eric Chavez let off the inning with a single. Hitting for the pitcher, Parra followed with a homer, and Ciarte stayed in the ball game and replaced Cody Ross in left. In Ciarte, three for 29 to begin his big league career. Randy Choke, parts of four seasons with the Diamondbacks, 04 through 07. He's another one of those guys that helped get me fired. <laughs> he didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> well, I don't think so either. He was trying his best. They were all trying their best. Just didn't work out. Two and one. Well, it's good to see that you're so open-minded about things. <laughs> <laughs> I like that job. I think it worked out pretty well for yeah. all involved. Yeah, yeah. And now it's working out well for the entire organization again. I love the idea of Enciarte trying to bunt for a base hit with his skill set. Especially against a tough lefty. You see a lot of left-handers do that. You bring in a sidearm and left-handed pitcher like a Joe Thatcher or a Randy Chode, a guy that's going to be tough to stay in there and really do anything swinging the bat. And especially if you run like Enciarte, drop that bunt down, keep it away from Yadier Molina, and take your chances. Two balls and two strikes. Swing and bunt this time, and that rolls foul. Saw Randy Choate had that ERA coming in near six and a half. It's a little misleading. He gave up six runs in the ninth inning against the Cubs well, about 10 days ago or so. That was a 17 to 5 game. It was just kind of one of those games. And he had an ERA of 238 going in. And now he's at 639. That's the life of a very short term reliever. Well, just take one for the team. That happens occasionally. You know, your bullpen's a little ragged, it's a blowout ball game. Sometimes uh, somebody in that bullpen just has to take one for the team. Their numbers suffer for it. And like I said, when you're a short reliever, it takes a long time to get it back down to respectability. You're facing one or two batters at a time tops. ERA kind of hovers there. Shote thought he might run it over there, and the high throw pulls Adams off the bag. And Enciarte with great speed is aboard to lead off the 10th. A routine play for Shote. It looked like he couldn't quite make up his mind how to get the ball to first base, and it cost him. I think you're absolutely right. He was going to run at first base and toss it underhanded. Then I think he realized Inciarte was busting down the line. I better get it over there as quickly as I can. He went to the overhand toss. Inciarte could have been going a little bit harder that time, made it an easier call at first base. Yeah, well, he's not running hard yeah, there. He's breaking it down, but fortunately the throw was high. Adams couldn't get the tag back down quickly enough. So the high throw pulls Big City off the bag, and that's an error on the Cardinal pitcher at Enciarte's aboard to lead off the 10th. Gerardo Parra. Parra homered his last time up, a two-run shot. This was Parra in the eighth. Most of his home runs this year have been that line drive variety. They don't clear the fence by a big margin, but he gets enough of them to sneak them into the bullpen or up into the bleachers, depending on the ballpark. Good, solid contact. Showing bunt on that first delivery from Choke. Once again, because it's a tough lefty on the mound, a left-handed hitter at the plate. Trying to put down the sack bunt. You know, watching Inciarte go down that first baseline. I know that's a play that 99 times out of 100, you're going to be out by a few steps at first base. But when one of your biggest assets is speed, 
and you're a bench guy trying to battle for playing time, you cannot afford any letdown. You've got to run hard all the time. Yeah, especially if you're a 23 year old in your first major league stint trying to impress. That wasn't the way to do it. 0 and 1. Another throw over. But when he turns on the Jets, boy, he can go. Long look down to Glenn Sherlock at third. Oh, and two. If you're wondering about the possibility of Inciarte stealing second base, certainly he's got good enough speed to steal a base, but it's going to be dependent on the kind of jump he can get against Randy Choate. Cardinals have only allowed one stolen base in their last 25 games plus. It's no picnic if you're in Ciarte over there trying to get a read on a veteran left hand pitcher and Yadier Molina behind the plate. Not ideal for any base stealing. This is where Dave McKay, the first base coach, can help somewhat, but uh, you know, until you actually see his move and see his delivery to home plate and try to decipher some difference in those two things, there's not really much a first base coach can do to help you in this short amount of time. Able to hold off there, one and two. Inciarte holds and Parr drives it to right. Allen Craig, the running catch. That's the first out. Boy, Alan Craig really battled that ball out there in right field. Looked like a routine fly ball to medium depth right field. He just kept drifting back, drifting back, drifting back, and reaches up very late up above his head to make the play. Mike Matheny to the mound. And now you've got a parade of righties coming up. At least the next two anyway, so that's it for Choate. And here comes, we should see a big ovation here at Bush Stadium. After a year away, back from Tommy John surgery, it is the veteran closer, Jason Mock.
Tied for the National League lead with 42 saves two years ago. He missed all of last season after Tommy John surgery just activated this week. And for the first time in more than a year, he is out there on a big league mound. Chris Owings. Activated yesterday, and here he is. I was going to say model throw a fastball, and then another fastball, and then another fastball. So gonna, what's he got? He's not going to try to trick anybody. Converted catcher. He was actually uh, voted the best defensive catcher in the Cardinals organization when he was in the minor leagues, but a career 191 hitter sent him to the mound. And it's worked out pretty well there. Chris Owings 0 for 4. Ender Inciarte. The go ahead run at first with one out. He reached on the error by Randy Choate. And Mott, it's been a while for him. 3 0 on Owings. And the Diamondbacks would love to get Enciarte with his speed into scoring position as the go ahead run. This drive. Mott did work six and two third in a minor league rehab stint. So he's not coming off totally cold here, but certainly this is a whole different ball game, literally. Hey, you see how Mott uh, takes the ball out of his glove and then pounds it back into the glove as he starts his delivery to home plate right there. 93, strike two. Again, he's been busy out there tonight. Enciarte back to the bat, two down. Uh, it's been a year since Mott has been in there, and he's itching to get on to, into a game. This was during our thunderstorm about four o'clock this afternoon. He was the only guy out there, just kind of letting that beard soak it in. <laughs> All his other teammates ran for cover. They were in the clubhouse under the dugout to cover there, but not Mott. He was out there just letting that thing get a little. That's it. Mm -hmm. Soak it in. And it's, uh, I guess it's dried out. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Goldie into left. That gets down. It's a base hit. And Ciarte heads for third. Holiday plays it off the wall. They will wave in Ciarte. Here's the relay, and he is out. Well, with two outs, they say make them throw you out, and sometimes they do. Matt Holliday played that one off the wall, and they get in Ciarte at the plate. The relay from Descalso, and there's Molina. And Ciarte is out. We stay tied in the 10th.
It was Cody Ross on that bunt play in the fifth, and here on the Goldie double in the tenth, Ender and Ciarte. Yeah, you called it right. We've talked about Matt Holliday and his deficiencies in the left field. It takes a perfect throw to the relay man, a perfect throw to the plate. Unfortunately, that time, Cardinals were able to make both of those throws as they get in Ciarte at home plate. I mean, you figure in a 2-2 game, two outs, you've got a really fast base runner out there. That's a good time to take that chance, and the Cardinals just executed it perfectly. And now Holiday will lead off the 10th. Evan Marshall back out there after a 1-2-3 ninth, including a strikeout. Holiday scored the Cardinals' first run. He was hit by a pitch. Came in on a two-out single by Craig in the fourth. Holiday, Adams, and Molina, three, four, and five. Well hit, left center. That ball gets down and bounces off the wall. Holiday is the winning run at second with nobody out. Pushing that first pitch, middle in, up a little bit. Splits that gap in left center field. Even with A.J. Pollock's speed, he can't get there quickly enough. Mike Matheny really doesn't have any pinch runner possibilities. He's got Johnny Peralta and the backup catcher, Tony Cruz, on the bench. Diamondback bullpen is quiet as Matt Adams steps in. He's got a pair of hits tonight, a single in the fourth, a double in the sixth. And they're going to walk Adams. You've got right-handers Molina and Craig coming up. A real good possibility of a double play after the intentional walk to Adams. You got Molina. In the on deck circle who doesn't run well Adams runs surprisingly well for a big man but holiday not that good of a base runner out there at second so go ahead and walk the big lefty set up a potential double play. And the chance of Yachty Yachty here in St. Louis. His last time up, a one-out double in the eighth. He scored the tying run on a John Jay sack fly. Holiday, the runner at second. Adams at first. And now it's conference time. Paul Goldschmidt will stroll to the mound and get with Evan Marshall. Yeah, Martin Prado uh, gives the signs to the Diamondbacks infield as to what bunt defense play they want to run in the event Molina is bunting. And... Paul Goldschmidt understands that Evan Marshall hasn't been in many of these situations. Just wanted to make sure the young pitcher knew exactly what his duties were. Molina squaring the bunt pulls back. Gets it down in front of the plate. Montero has one play. This is the second time Evan Marshall has worked more than one inning. And now we've got a conversation with Kirk Gibson and Doug Eddings. Is Gibby insisting that maybe wasn't a fair ball. I think Molina may have kind of short legged it out of the batter's box to try to get in Miguel Montero's way to make sure Miggy couldn't get one of the lead runners. Watch Molina as he comes out of that batter's box. Bunts the ball in fair territory. Yeah, it just looked like he slowed Miggy down just a little bit. I'm not sure if he would have had a play on either one of the lead runners and Kirk Gibson just wanted to make sure that uh, Doug Eddings uh, didn't see anything unusual there at home plate. And in case you're wondering umpire judgment calls like interference or obstruction are not subject to review. Last time Marshall worked more than one inning he went one to third in Milwaukee and got the 
Windmiller Park. And now with runners on second and third and one out, it worked to Alan Craig, who has been on base all four times. He's been up three singles and a walk. I know you have a righty on righty matchup here, but uh, boy, Alan Craig has been an RBI machine, especially last season for the Cardinals. I think the conventional wisdom is you walk this guy, even though it's a righty on lefty matchup, and set up a double play. Winning run at third with one out. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'd much rather work to John Jay than Alan Craig. Yeah, I mentioned in his last at bat, John Jay's grounded into seven double plays this year. Two and oh. Way he's not getting much to hit. And Sherlock, you just saw him signaling into Miguel Montero. Holiday is the winning run. Ball four, bases full. Meeting at the mound. They're going to get Mike Harkey out there. Let's see. Nope. It'll be Gibby. I think the, really the only question here is do you play your middle infielders in and try to cut off the run at home plate or do you play them back and try to turn two up the middle? The corners will certainly be drawn in. The outfield's already drawn into a position where if they catch a fly ball where they're standing, they should be able to throw Matt Holiday out at home plate, but the big question I think is with the middle infielders here. We've got a guy in Marshall that throws a heavy sink. And that's likely to induce a ground ball if you can put it in the right spot. Eddings is out there to break it up. Jose Akendo, the Cardinal third base coach. You don't worry about Adams, his run is meaningless. Uh, if Holiday is the the guy you're worried about, obviously, the winning run. Then what's the conversation, Adams and Akendo? That's a good question. <laughs> Just stand there. Don't move. Base is loaded. One out. And the middle infield is playing in. They're going to try to cut that run off at home plate. No surprise, another Cardinal hitter with runners in scoring position chasing that first delivery. They love to ambush that first pitch. It was Jay who tied the game in the eighth inning with his sack fly. Outfielders are well in, too, trying to cut down a run if they can. That's as shallow as you'll see an outfield play. A ball and two strikes. Cardinals do get the win here. Jason Mott will earn the victory in his first game back in a year.
something you have to guard against as an outfielder. I know you want to play shallow and try to throw that runner out at home plate if you catch a ball, but if you get too shallow, you end up backpedaling as you make the catch. And with the speed that the Diamondbacks have in the outfield right now, I think they could probably play a step or two deeper than they are. Gets a big strikeout, two down. Just hyper aggressive in that at bat was John Jay chasing everything. Ends up swinging at a sinker in the dirt. So with two outs of the bases loaded, it'll be Descalso. Matt Holiday, the winning run at third. Descalso, 0 for 4, he struck out back in the fourth. Ball one. Rolled foul, a ball and a strike. Johnny Peralta is in the on deck circle. The pitcher spot is due up next, but it won't matter either way. The 1 1. Two and two. That's a funny looking swings against Evan Marshall. That's still part of the unknown. I think that has a lot to do with it. He's thrown more change ups today than we're used to seeing him. I misidentified that strike three pitch to John Jay. That was a change up in the dirt. Yeah, he comes in here with a reputation of being a heavy sinker ball pitcher and guys get that bat started a little bit early and they're susceptible to the change up. Bases loaded two outs two balls and two strikes. It's full. Marshall now about to throw his 35th pitch. Matt Holiday, the winning run at third. Adams and Craig, the other base runners, but the only one that matters is 90 feet away. Staying alive. Too close to take, not good enough to do anything with that time. And as we've seen so many times from both teams tonight, just foul it off, stay alive. Back to the mound, Marshall, careful here. And Evan Marshall leaves him loaded. What a great job by the Diamondbacks rookie. He sends us to the 11 in the loop.
jerky all season long. Jack Link's beef jerky. Fade your wild side. Fade it. And we're getting wild here in St. Louis. Evan Marshall, the rookie. What a baptism of fire it's oh, been for this man. kid since he came up from Reno. Very poised out there under the toughest of circumstances. Two big bases loaded outs in the 10th. And now we're on to the 11th. Jason Mott is back out there for the Cardinals. He'll work to Miguel Montero, Aaron Hill, and Martin Prado. Cardinals have stranded 12 tonight. They are 2 for 11 with runners in scoring position. Miggy can't get the gloves on. He puts a lot of pine tar on his hands to make sure he gets a good grip on the ball when he throws. He's talked about that before. Yeah, occasionally he's got to actually get his teeth in there and bite on those batting gloves to try to stretch them out, pull them down tight on his fingers. Let's see if he can run into a fastball here. Take advantage of the Mott's rust, although he didn't look very rusty early. Goldie had him for the double in the 10th, but Enciarte was thrown out at home. I think he does have a homer against Jason Mott in his career, two for nine lifetime with that home run. Lifts that in the air, but it's drifting near the D-backs dugout. Foul ground. There is room, however, for Carpenter, and he's got it for the first out. He missed all of last season, the first portion of this year after Tommy John surgery. He missed the whole run last year. But what a season he had in 2012 following their World Series championship in 11. 42 saves and 49 chances. Aaron Hill, he's 0 for 4. Diamondback bullpen is busy after getting two high-stress innings out of Marshall. Trevor Cahill is throwing. That one is rolled as short. And Descalso throws out Hill. Want to give a shout-out tonight to a minor leaguer, BB, in the Diamondback system. There's Cahill. The Mobile Bay Bears, their first baseman, John Griffin, in their game tonight had five hits. Four of them were home runs. Wow. Two solo shots and two two-run homers. Double A Mobile, a 17-7 win for the Bay Bears at Tennessee. They beat the Smokies. It was the Southern League's first four-homer game since 1969. Whew. That'll impress the new boss. <laughs> Prado looks at strike one. And according to our friends at Sabre, Mobile's John Griffin, only the 24th professional player since 2000 with a four-homer game. There have been 20 of those in the minors and four in the majors. So congratulations to John and the Bay Bears. Was that game uh, in Mobile or? It was at uh, Tennessee. Okay. The Tennessee Smokies. There can be a wind tunnel blowing out to right field at that ballpark in uh, in Knoxville. You never know with some of you, you see the minor league stats and you, you know about the ballparks and the elevation and all mm -hmm. kinds of conditions. You're never quite sure what it means when you look at the numbers. Hey, four homers in a game is four yeah, homers that, in a game. That's that a good month. For, that'll speak for itself. <laughs> two and two now. Prado singled in the second. He's one for four. A quick 11 for Jason Mott. We are tied up in St. Louis.
action beginning with the Rangers taking on the Tigers on Fox Sports 1 and then the season premiere of Baseball Night in America on Fox as the Cardinals battle the Reds. The Royals square off against the Angels or the Nationals take on the Pirates. Our MLB doubleheader begins Saturday 12.30 Pacific on Fox Sports 1 and continues at 4 Pacific on Fox. New pitcher for the D-backs, Trevor Cahill, to start the bottom half of the 11th. Couple of changes out there for the D-backs. They get into this portion of the ball game and get one of your long relievers in the game. You want to make sure he can go multiple innings. And with the pitcher spot due to lead off in the top of the 12th, uh, Kirk Gibson not only brings Trevor Cahill into the game, but he also brings Cliff Pennington into play second base. Pennington will lead off in the top of the 12th. Cahill will go in there and he'll spot. Johnny Peralta hitting for the pitcher to open the 11. A double and a home run last night. He drove in two. There's strike one from Cahill. Peralta, a very hot bat in this Cardinals lineup as the D-backs found out last night. One for nine career against Cahill. He got off to a terrible start here in St. Louis. He was hitting about a buck fifty somewhere near the middle of April, but over the last three weeks, he's hit almost 340 with five homers. Two balls and a strike. Dropped it in there at 77, two and two. Good breaking ball right there. Anytime you can throw something other than a fastball when you're behind in the count, you got a pretty good chance of getting a called strike. Peralta, I'm sure, sitting on dead red. And Cahill strikes him out to open up the 11th. Good change up that time. Threw a slider on the 2-1 pitch to get back in the count, then comes back with a change up to a guy that's just looking to pull a fastball out of the ballpark. Nice sequence there for Trevor. I wonder, Bob, about the rotation, and it seems like in terms of putting Trevor back into the rotation, this is just us talking here, and maybe Cole Mentor coming out and going back to the bullpen, it seems like there's some inertia there headed in that direction. I think you're probably right. I mean, uh, you know, Josh Cole Mentor's done a nice job. He's done what he could do in that rotation, but it's awfully tough, uh, you know, when you're basically a two-pitch guy. And especially when you don't have the overpowering fastball, he doesn't really throw a sinker. He throws that four seamer up high in the zone. Matt Carpenter on the ground, a shortstop. Chris Owings throws him out. I mean, they needed someone to come in and calm things down in that rotation when nothing was working, when no one was healthy, no one was really pitching all that well. And Josh did that. He stabilized things. So in terms of that, it's very much mission, mission accomplished. But in terms of your long-term success in one of your five rotation spots, it seems like Cahill has the stuff, and that's probably at some point where he's headed. I guess the question at this point would then be, you know, getting Trevor stretched out again if you'd want to put him back in the rotation. Colton Wong attacks the first pitch, hits it into shallow right. Har is there. An eight-pitch inning for Cahill. And we are through 11 in St. Louis all time.
The Diamondbacks have had two guys thrown out at the plate tonight. Yeah, safety squeeze attempt right there. Cody Ross read it well. Just a nice play by Michael Walker. And then Paul Goldschmidt with a double down in the corner with Ender Inciarte running from first base. Perfectly executed relay by the Cardinals just in time to get Inciarte at home plate. And now we're into the 12th in a 2 2 ball game and a new pitcher for the Cardinals. Their seventh tonight is the right hander. This is Seth Manus. A 2-7-0 ERA in 15 appearances. Cliff Pennington just into the ball game. Leads it off. Daniel Descalso moves from shortstop to second base. Peralta, who hit for the pitcher, stays in the game. And he takes over at short, so Colton Wong is out. Pitcher spot is now second in the St. Louis lineup. Certainly a different look for the Diamondbacks hitters after a series of flamethrowers. Well, other than Randy Choate, out of that Cardinal bullpen, uh, they go to Manus, whose best fastball tops out right around 90 miles per hour. So it was a good change up, couple different breaking balls. Well, as we know, Cliff Pennington last year was the Diamondbacks' extra innings hero. So many big hits when it mattered in all those late games. In extra innings last year, Pennington hit 474, 9 for 19 with three RBIs. And his teammates kind of started joking in the dugout last year when they went to extras. They would say, oh, well, I guess you're going to get a hit now that it's extras. Had that walk-off single in the 16th, beat the Cardinals, this ball club, last April 3rd and the longest game ever at Chase Field. And he's worked it full three and two to open the 12th. I'm sure there have been games. I can't remember one recently where there have been this many foul balls. Both teams fouling off those borderline pitches on two strike counts. He's rolled the second. Descalso has it. What a winner. I was just going to say that, especially with all these two strike counts. This guy's staying alive. It, it's a great example of how hard it is to get big league hitters out, even the guys that are hitting, you know, in the low 200s. They'll battle you up there and make you work. AJ Pollock getting into that danger zone, partner. I only have 12 innings in my book. That's right. This is it. Down the line in right, but a hooking foul. A nice catch out there. That's why you bring your glove. Let's go on, young man. AJ one for four, a single back in the fifth. a lot of flexibility now for either manager they're both down to their backup catcher as a position player available off the bench Kirk Gibson has Randall Delgado and Addison Reed available out of the bullpen and for Mike Matheny he's got left-hander Seacrest uh, Manus is in the game so he's got no more right-handed relievers 1-1 one, one misses it's two balls and a strike now this is where the starting pitchers run back in the clubhouse put their cleats on just in case. Because usually you're out there in your, uh, well, your sneakers, right? Yeah, or turf shoes. Oh, hard to third, right to Carpenter. Well, the Diamondbacks, in terms of having Cahill and Delgado out there, are in certainly much better shape than the Cardinals. You've got some guys that can take some innings if it turns into one of these marathons. There was some foul weather expected here later tonight, so it's still fine right now, but you do need to occasionally glance at the radar. You're supposed to get some thunderstorms overnight tonight. Ender and Ciarte. There is Randall taking it easy. He's got his spikes on.
in Ciarte. Right back to the box. Drives it into center for a two out single. To sink her up on the inside part of the plate, and NCR, they just sent it right back up the middle of the field for a two out base hit. Let's see if he tries to steal a base right here. You've got Para up one for five, a homer in the gate. That's accounted for all the Diamondbacks scoring. NCR holds, and Para looks at strike one. Ask and you shall receive. The Cardinals have hit 40 foul balls in this game. The Diamondbacks have hit 36, a total of 76 foul balls, and a lot of those in two strike counts. Drives the 0-1 to center. John Jay hangs on. Well, last night it was A.J. Pollock almost in that exact same spot. And tonight in front of the Jim Edmonds side in center, John Jay goes and gets one and perhaps saves the ball game for St. Louis. Two outs and Ender and Ciarte with great speed at first. There's no question that he scores on that ball hit by Parra if John Jay doesn't make this catch. Yeah, John Jay's been criticized here in St. Louis. He doesn't always take the most direct route to the baseball, but he did on that drive. I thought Parra had that one down in the gap for sure. No question that saved a run. And if you think about the two plays the Diamondbacks had where runners were thrown out at the plate. And that catch by Jay, the Cardinals defense has kept this game tied. The relay play that started with Matt Holiday went to Descalso. And then the diving catch by Jay in center to end the top of the 12. Both plays took away runs from the D-backs. That's something the Cardinals have uh, always prided themselves in, their ability to play defense. Don't give the opposing team more than three outs in an inning. Tied for second in with the fewest errors in the National League going into play tonight. And that's not a good matchup for the D-backs. Three homers and ten at bats against Cahill. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Holiday doubled to open up the 10th. But was left stranded at third. Three and one.
I tell you, Trevor Cahill has shown a lot of confidence in that straight changeup. He threw one right there, three and one to Matt Holiday. Got him to roll over and pull it foul. And with Trevor, it's all about confidence in his stuff. Winning run aboard to open the 12th. Here's Big City. And he's been on base three times. Matt Adams, a single, a double, and an intentional walk. These two have a history recently of extra inning games. Adams down the line in left. That is hooking, and that's a fair ball. Here comes Holiday. Oh, they're going to stop him. Okendo puts on the brakes. Nobody out, no need to risk it. And Matt Adams comes up with a big double. Okendo was initially waving Holiday home, but Enciarte fished it out of the corner and left, so... With nobody out, he put on the brakes. Well, I'll tell you, Big City is a handful. Obviously has tremendous pull power. Shows his opposite field power here. Down there in the corner, rattling around near the foul pole. Akindo throwing up the stop sign early that time. He would anticipate an intentional walk here. and More of the same scenario that we had back in the 10th inning. Still have to execute this with the winning run at third. During this intentional walk to Yadier Molina, it should be pointed out that his sacrifice bunt back in the 10th inning, moving both runners into scoring position, was his first in over two years. And in that case, it was Holiday in third and Adams in second. That's where we are right now. Molina now joins them on the bases with nobody out. Alan Craig. He's been up there five times. He has reached base five times. Three singles and two walks. Conference time. d backs and Cardinals, of course, third game of the year last year. Played the longest game in Chase Field history. Here in St. Louis last June 4th, they played 14 innings. Went four hours and 53 minutes. And we're back on that same script tonight. And another long chat between Akendo and Adams as the runner at second. Base is loaded, no outs. Cahill and Craig. Cardinals left them loaded in the 10th. Cahill trying to match what Evan Marshall did here. A strike. Alan Craig doing Trevor Cahill a big favor right there, chasing that sinker nearly in the dirt. Yeah, Craig has been scuffling despite his good night tonight. Kind of shows you where his head is at. He was hitting 220 at the start of the ball game. Infield medium depth, outfield cheating in. One and two. No 
shortage of drama here tonight. Stays alive. We were just talking about that. Just up there firing that sinker. Two balls and two strikes. Roll to short. CO coming home. Oh. Cardinals win. The Diamondbacks had two base runners thrown out at home. The winning run for the Cardinals squeaks by, and they take the first two games of the series. Well, what an unfortunate turn of events. Nice backhanded play by CO. Just made a bad throw to Miguel Montero. I think Miggy could have stretched out into fair territory a little bit. Might have been able to catch that on a short hop, but he kind of stretched over toward the right-handed batter's box, made it a much tougher play. He backs led it 2 1 in the eighth on the Parra homer. Cardinals tied it up home half of the eighth and they win it in the 12th. And we will be back from Bush Stadium in St. Louis to wrap it up. St. Louis a wins last night. And they win here. Much more Diamondbacks Live follows our break. Back with more from St. Louis here on Fox Sports Arizona after this.